This okay, conference will now supporter. be recorded. Okay, Salvatore, I'm going to swear you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my belief. Yes. Okay, so you have a, a real estate support service and uh, you were sent uh, information looking for a personal property declaration. Is that true? Yes. Okay. So, and and I neglected to file, um, and when I got the bill, it certainly got my attention. The company doesn't have any assets, so uh, when I did get the notice, it it, it didn't. Um, uh, uh, poor judgment. I, I decided or thought that it, it wouldn't be necessary since there are no assets. Okay, um, but you're filed with the state of Connecticut under a name. Is that is that true? Um, uh, no, just at the uh, town hall, just in Wallingford. Okay, so you're you're. Yeah, the, the the plan was to set up a company, but it 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 just it never came to pass. Okay. Um, so, so, Mr. Jackson, I um, what are we actually looking at here? Um, he, he's filed yeah. something. So, Mr. Chairman, um, we picked this uh, business up probably through the uh, Hello? office where they file a you know, DBA, doing business as. Uh, we picked it up and we had to make an estimate because there was no filing. Uh, the other, Mr. Salvatore, you know, testifies that they have no assets. Normally, we would ask them to provide a copy of the tax return showing that they have no assets for that business. And I'll give you an example by way of example. Um, a real estate holding company, for example, they have no assets other than the real estate. And of course, we tax the real estate separately. So the actual holding company itself may not be an operating business other than to hold real estate. There may be other examples. And we, I think we advised you know, the other party to be prepared to provide documentation at this hearing to show this board that they have no assets, which they are claiming. And uh, we have not seen any documentation that we could, you know, uh, Make a determination based upon. So I would ask the chairman, to the chairman, there is documentation. There's a reason that we'd like to uh, evaluate that. So, so uh, Salvatore, are, are, is this something yeah. you're going to use, dissolve, not use? Um, use in the future, yes. Use in the future, yes. Okay, because because currently your tax liability is thirty six dollars here. All right, we don't want to. Yeah, you know, I know. In this day, I, 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 I almost don't take up your time with this, but. <laughs> yeah. Um, if if it's if it's some kind of business, they're going to be looking for some kind of list of something. You, I mean, if you're a business, you got to have something, right? Um, so yeah, right now you're sitting at a thousand dollars with a 25% penalty um, on assessed value uh, for twelve hundred and fifty dollars. I mean, if you're going forward uh, and you, you know, just file the paperwork every year and you keep this thing holding, um, you know, your, li your liability is twenty nine dollars or yeah, you know whatever. Okay. The, the uh, 1250 and the 250 penalty that got my attention. It's the, the tax you're talking about. Um, That's, I'll just. We'll, the we'll tax just rate is not 250. It. It's not 250. Okay. Okay. 
So your total right. liability is $36.48. Okay, let me not take any more of your time and I'll okay. stop it all and pay that. Okay, so do I hear a motion for the board? Make a motion, uh, Mr. Chairman, no change. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Thank you. All right, thank you, everyone. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Chairman, I believe we have Mr. Mike Stone. When you're ready, just let me know. Okay, we're going to move on to hearing number 2020-167, Owen Stone. And I'm speak. I'm going to be swearing in Mike Stone. Mike Stone, are you Owen Stone, or you're not? This is, Owen a, this, is this, this is this is Mark Stone, his son. His son. Okay, it says Mike Stone here. Okay, yeah, did, my name did is Owen Mark, Stone yeah. give you some paperwork to represent him, or to um, because he filled out the paperwork. And he's not the one speaking. Okay. Um, no, he didn't give me paper, but on my the thing they sent me to purpose of this on this uh, literature here, it's Stone Sand and Gravel LLC, which is, um, you know, my father owns owns this the property where we're at. But Stone Sand and Gravel is is my bit is my company. Um. Again, if I can uh, help, Mr. Chairman, I will. Yes, Mr. Jackson. Okay, so, you know, our account shows Stone, Sand, and Gravel LLC. That is correct. At one Lone Place Road here in Wallingford. Um, That's correct, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, you know, and we've placed a market value. Let me see. Um, you know, okay, let, me, let me go with assessed value. We've placed an assessment of $6,660. We know that there is a bulldozer, there's a backhoe, there's a forklift there, there's other miscellaneous equipment, but those are the three main uh, pieces of equipment that are located at the property. Um, I think the, uh, the appellant had put down either, you know, zero or, or a very de minimis amount. And you know we disagree. We think that should be some minimal assessment, and we've come up with sixty-six hundred and sixty dollars. Uh, the chief appraiser is here on the line as well. If you have any questions, but uh, so so first of all, Mark Stone is I, I, I miss St Stone Sand and Gravel LLC. Is that did yes, I identify? Sir. Okay, that's true. Yes. Yeah, yes, sir. And for the benefit of the board, Mr. Chairman, I think we've provided a couple of photographs. Um, you've got those today. Uh, this yeah. property is located next to the train tracks, just I think kind of behind where the McDonald's is. Okay. Yes, I, I'm I'm familiar with the property. Okay, thank you, thank you, sir. Okay, so. So what are what are we actually discussing here? Um, 
Are you speaking to me, sir? Yes. You you say you have personal property there of fifteen hundred dollars. Well, well, what I did was how I do it. This everything here is both basically my father's and myself's. But over the years, um, my mother, the accountant that my mother had when she was alive, took care of everything. And when she passed away, we got another account. And basically, he took over where she left off. But and, and I don't know how to do the um, devaluation and such as that. So I couldn't you know, answer that question. But my accountant, he's the one I give him everything. And, you know, as far as I know that some, you know, a lot of these equipment, for example, most of it, you know, there were just machines. Some of the ones we were describing, they were bought in, in like 1968, 1969. And they've always been here in Wallingford, so we have paid taxes on them. Um, but I, he, he's the one that kind of figures out how, how the, how that works, which I, I really don't. So I couldn't answer that. You know, I couldn't speak for that because I don't understand how that type of thing works. But I, that's why I give this, this information to, to him and let him. You know, when he gives me my paperwork, I, I just rely on that. Do you know if your accountant filed the paperwork? I mean, I'm, I'm. It's looking like he hasn't filed anything. Oh, you mean you mean my personal property paper? That you mean my you know like every every year? Yes. Uh, oh yeah, no no no. And when I and matter of fact, when I got this notice, um, the first thing as soon as I saw on there that it said a penalty for late or not filing, uh, the first thing I asked the girl when I went up to the um tax department and I showed her that because she's the one that told me how to go about going through this to get to uh, make an appointment and she, and I said. I did. I, I did file this, correct? Because I, I know I did. And she looked, and uh, it was filed. Uh, no, for absolutely sure. I mean, and I and, and I there's a copy. I think I would have a copy here of it because you get stamped when I when I go there. I think so. I would have my um, receipt or whatever when I when I brought it up there. I would have something because I make sure I, I get all that stuff. Well, there, there's a big gap here. There's a big gap in in this whole uh, appeal here because I don't see any. You know, I don't see that list, and I also, you know, see a penalty. And when there's a penalty, it says to me, "Not filed." Is that is that true, uh, Mr. Jackson? To our records, that is correct, sir. So, you know, um, I mean, I'm 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 where I have my things right now. In other words. I'm not too good on, on when I go to town and, you know, do, do all these different tra transactions and stuff. But when I go there, normally would the girl at the counter, when I bring it to her, would she, would she take that like stamp thing and stamp something on it and then hand me the copy of it? Cause I, 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 I could probably, if I go in my shop here, I could probably put my hands on it right now if, if, uh, if that'll help. But I know, you know, I make sure I do all these papers for you know, when it comes to the town stuff, I make sure I do it. So I know I did. And when I went up there, like I said, the only reason when I got this thing in the mail is the first thing I did was go up there and see the girl in the office there that comes up to the window. And my first question was, you know, to, just to double check is, I mean, you know, I, I wasn't going to tell her it was, she was doing it wrong, but, but I knew that I, that I went up there and put it in. So, and she checked for me and she, you know, she, she took my information and she went in the back, you know, talked to somebody and came out and said, no, you, you filed it. So, I mean, uh, that's all I can really tell you, okay, sir. But so if you can tell you me what have, it is, right right now, what we're t what we're talking about here is you owe the town one hundred and ninety four dollars for taxes. Okay. Uh huh. That's, okay. That's what you owe. That's where we're okay. that's where we're heading. All right. Okay. So one hundred and ninety four dollars, or we start to dig deeper and deeper and deeper. But if you have uh, because. Again, by what I see here, okay, this is an estimate because we don't have something and a 25% okay. penalty, all right, was added to it. So right now your assessed value for whatever you have on the property there is $6,660. And if you have a backhoe and two bulldozers that are part of that $6,660, um, we'll, we'll whether you bought them in 1968 or not, they're still worth more than $6,660. So um, I think, you know, at this point, um, you need to kind of 
Um, oh, I under, no, no, I, no I, understand, I understand what you're saying. And the thing is, you know, because I don't have any idea when I see when it go, when when a when a paper comes and changes that much, I don't know what to expect because I don't know. In other words, that's a big jump, and then I don't know about having enough money to do the um, you know, to make sure I have it. But you know, I didn't realize that that was the cost. So basically, like for example, if that's what it is, and I didn't have the penalty, it would be even a little bit less. Yeah. No, you know, in other, in other words, if I filed it on time, I would have been in better. You know, I, I mean, I know you're I put it on paying, time, but you're paying. You the penalty is costing you, uh, thirty five forty dollars. Okay. All right. I didn't. I didn't have any idea what the numbers add up to on that. So I mean, basically, does it sound like the best thing to do for everyone? Which you know, I can absorb that. That's not a problem. I mean, should I just just call it a day and uh, conclude I, this? I, I mean, is that I would do that, and also. I would talk to your accountant because if if he said he filed it with us, we don't. Well, have he wouldn't. It. I mean, I I he wouldn't. It would it would have been me. I mean, I'm not gonna. You know, I, I mean, I'm gonna okay. go along with what you're saying. But I know I did um because I make sure I do that. So I know. And like I said, I'm gonna check through my papers just to double just to make sure because I like you know. Okay. I, I know I I'm gonna make but you know just to make sure I'm on top of it. But that's um that's why I make sure I'm doing these things you know properly. That's that's my main concern. Okay, do I hear a motion from the board? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to no change. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. All right, th thank you folks and uh, have a good night. You too. Uh, uh, Mr. Jackson, did Delta Arsenal go to the consent agenda? Well, Mr. Chairman, on Delta Arsenal, recommending that we transfer that case to the consent agenda, and let me explain why. Um, in the past, it has always been our practice to extend an, ex an extension for filing uh, to all manufacturers to the state and the state deadline of December 15th. So in other words, they're supposed to file by November 1st, but they can get an extension on the last day that the state allows, December 15th. In the past, we have always extended that. Uh, uh, we've always given that extension. Okay. Uh, in this case this year, and, and I have to take the blame myself, and I want to apologize to the board because um, I guess it was because it was a revaluation year and we had so much going on that this slipped past me. I say it, you know, it flew under my radar, and they were they were penalized. But I would have normally, in any other year, I would have normally given them an extension until December 15th. So it's not that they didn't file by December 15th. They, just, they filed, I think it was December 4th. And, uh, you know, and for some reason we, you know, we, we um, denied their exemption. And in the past, I would have, I would have always granted that. So I'm going to ask the board, I'm going to accept the responsibility of myself that it was an oversight on my part. I'm going to ask the board to just, uh, allow me to grant them that extension retroactively. There is a filing fee uh, for the extension of $50, which I understand they came into the office today and made that payment. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's different from other cases where manufacturers didn't file at all, or did not file by December 15th. These folks did file within that time frame, and for some for one reason or another, our staff uh, kind of dropped the balls. I'm asking the board. Okay, do I hear a, correct that? A, a motion from the board for hearing number 2020-180, Delta Arsenal, LLC. Mr. Chairman, make a from, motion. To, from, to move it to the consent agenda. Make a motion for 2020-180 to move 
to consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Do no one else in the waiting room at this point? I'm going to get up and stretch my legs, if that's okay, Mr. Chairman. Yep, I'll, uh, I'll be back myself. I mean, uh, the next block is seven to eight. Uh, it looks like we're going to be um, a little bit of a while with one uh, appellant here. So, okay, eight o'clock. Let's take a, a five, six minute break and be back for not eight o'clock, seven o'clock. Can hear you, Shelby. I, I think we're going to need to start calling for some of the later bills and ask them to log in sooner so that we don't, you know, sit around doing nothing. I think so we've got a pretty full agenda tonight. So we're going to do that. We're going to redo that. And one of us should start calling that. And I would start with the latest. Just latest ones, okay. Is that something you can work on, Kevin? Yeah, yeah. Um, Thank you. Just trying to find the schedule here. If you, if, you, if you don't have it, I can do it from my end. I, I've got it all here. Um, I just want to coordinate between the both of us. Because if I'm calling, then you're going to need to answer the chairman's questions. If you're, if you're going to ask questions or whatever, you yep. need to address those, those questions. One of us. All right, so I'll start with the last one first and go in that order. I would, yeah. And start, just tell them, say, look, the board is running ahead of schedule. Call in at any time. So okay. We'll call in, and then the chairman will, you know, bring them in, you know, case-by-case right. case basis. Okay. So, thank you. Yep.
Hello? Yes, caller six. Um, please identify yourself. Uh, my name is Peter DiNardo. Okay, I think, um, are we all back now? Um, Mr. I'm Jackson. Back, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Coons. Uh, Shelly, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. All right, so we're going to go to <clears throat> hearing Hello? number 2020-122. Okay, so hearing number is 2021. 22 is 102-104 South Turnpike. Mr. DiNardo, I'll swear you in. Okay. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. It is. Thank you. 102-104 South Turnpike Road. You've, you've placed the market value of 720000 on the property and the town currently has a market value of one million four hundred and seven thousand eight hundred dollars right so uh right so obviously it's it's substantially different um to give you some background information on this property, we uh, acquired it by way of uh, taking over the, the debt on the four buildings, not just this building. And at the time we took it over from the bank, I believe the outstanding debt was between 1.3 and $1.4 million. So that was, that's, you know, our basis in the property. During the time we acquired it, we had to put some money into the building we're referring to, which was leased to Masonic Care. However, the improvements were highly specific to that tenant, and that tenant only stayed for four years. So, you know, I, I only have what I paid for it, what the bank's appraisal was at that time, which I didn't submit it because it's a little old. I believe it's a December 2014 appraisal on, on all of the buildings, not this one alone. But, um, you know, and also other sales in the Wallingford area that I've come across recently, um, you know, which I believe supports my, you know, a value conclusion closer to mine than that of the town's. Okay, so, um, I mean, we did, we did adjust um, the assessed value uh, prior to this reval, the assessed value was 1,400,000. Right. We bring the property down to 985,500 assessed value. Right, you brought it down from around 2 million, I guess. Yeah, it was a bit of an assessed value to two million, um, and I understand that, you know. But it, what I would implore on you uh, is when the bank, uh, you know, was about to take back the property, and they sold the debt, they had appraisals 
you know, that were close to the value of the debt on the property. So while, you know, the value, and, and frankly, the value to me as a developer is different when it's leased because it's leased and it's on a net lease basis. So that supports a completely different value than as vacant. This building's 100% vacant. It's in a flood zone, which costs about 40000 a year for flood insurance because it is financed. We have to keep 500000 worth of insurance on it. That's about forty to $45,000. And as I tell you, I've called brokers. We call the people in economic development. A broker actually said, and this is a broker that used to lease those properties, they wanted to get paid each time they show it. So, I mean, you know, I, you know, notwithstanding, I appreciate the reduction you gave, but I, I don't think it's anywhere near where the market is for an office property in that location, unfortunately. I mean, I, you know, I, I look at this as we made a mistake. I wish I didn't take it back for the million three. I, I, I'm being honest with you because now it's just a drain to me. Um, all, all said, and, you know, for all. For all intents and purposes, I mean, is the, is the I can't give it back to the bank, right? Because I have the money to pay them and they know that. So I can't just walk away like the other borrower. But what I will say is there's some similar sales that I'm familiar with in Wallingford, like the building where Quest is on Sterling Drive, uh, you know, 88,000 feet. So that's a bigger building, 12 acres of land, more land, not in the flood zone, uh, laboratory, laboratory, and it's partly leased back. And that was sold for 2.3 million in 2019. So, you know. Uh, Peter, Peter, I have a question. This is Carl, one of the members. Hi, Carl. Do you have any um, any current documents uh, supporting some of the things you bring out? I mean, the appraisal, uh, bank documents, something comparable um, to the properties that you're making comparisons to? Well, I'm not an appraiser, and no, I don't have a current appraisal. The appraisal I referred to is older. I, I'm happy to submit that, but it, it's, it's you know it's five years old. So you know, generally, uh, you know, I, is that relevant? Is that something you'd want to look at? Uh, that's from 2014. That's that's too old, right? Very, very old. That's not a. That wouldn't. That so, wouldn't right. Right. So we haven't had the need for a recent <laughs> appraisal unless, you know, we end up in a court situation where we would um, have this appraised. And, uh, you know, frankly, um, you know, the way these hearings work, you know, sometimes they come up faster and then all the appraisers in the world seem to be busy at the same time. Um, otherwise, you know, I, I would have liked to submit information to you. I can, you know, we can try to have something put together quickly for the bo this board, if you think that would be of a benefit, um, you know, to, but we'd appraise, it's, you know, this has always been appraised as four buildings, four, pro you know, one property, even though they're separate parcels, they're separate tax parcels, you know, so it was always considered a combined situation. That's how we took tight, you know, that's how we took it over. Um, so, you know, uh, and of course, the Sterling sale is something that's a public knowledge uh, available well, through the how assessor. Much and, Sterling, you know, how much was the Sterling sale for? $2.3 million in April of 2019, and Quest took a lease on a substantial portion of the space. And how, how many square feet are in that building? 88,000. So that's what you're basing these values on is 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 20 something a foot square foot. Well, you know, I, I base it on, you know, on on that, you know, depending on how you value the land and, and building separately. Um, and the fact that when we took over the debt on this property, this is not a property I've been involved with long term. But in 2015, when we took over. The, the 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 loans a total of a million three and change was owed on the buildings there was a little bit of back taxes i think nineteen thousand dollars and uh he had a potential for a lease 
with Masonic here for 24,000 feet on 102 to 104 South Turnpike. So my cost was the value of the loan plus the improvement. And I, you know, obviously I thought they would have stayed longer because we did have to do some work to that building. It was renovated. It's in nice condition. It's a nicer condition than, you know, uh, it was prior to that, but it's office space. So, I mean, quite frankly, if you asked me to take over someone's loan at a million five on this right now, I wouldn't do it because I can't give the office away and it's just costing me money to carry. I'd rather keep my, you know, preserve cash and cash flow, but I can't unring the bell. Um, if you had to sell it right now, you know, it, 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 I think it would sell. Look, the three Sterling sale was an arm's length transaction from Quest. It was offered to me. We talked about it. There was a lease back on it. And frankly, as a, an, a you know, a developer of property, you only look at, you know, yeah, there's value to a building, but we look at it and rely on heavily on the rental stream. Otherwise, it's just a piece of inventory to me. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you if you offered this to me today for 20 a foot, I don't I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't write a check out for it. It's just not something I would do because I made a mistake, uh, you know, on the market there and, and thought the office market was stronger. I didn't realize the amount of office that was coming up online in the area so things changed i think the buildings are nice they've got courtyards they're interesting and to me better than most office buildings but that's not what you know i'm seeing and hearing from brokers uh, if a broker wants to get paid to show a building you know you got problems and that's my point that i'm trying to make um with this uh, property so what is it worth as i say i'm not an appraiser you know if if you, if you want to look at one before you make a decision i you know i don't know how quickly i can get one but i will get one if i'm appealing to court um you know because uh, you know what else can i do put yourself in my shoes correct and we don't have um you know we understand the sterling you know, we're, we're, you know, our value per square foot quickly placed on these buildings is, you know, somewhere in the 40 to 45 dollar range, um, um, which, which right. has, which, which has been reduced. I mean, we did reduce this particular, you know, property by, you know, over a half a million dollars. Um, so, you know, I think we're, we're working with you. It may not be, you know, exactly what you're looking for, but you know, we're we're aware of the problems uh, in the commercial office market. But uh, also, uh, I mean, we were working with you, and, and you know, forty forty five dollars. Uh, there's plenty of forty forty five dollar office, you know, space around Wallingford, I don't know, you know, again, um, whether it's selling, whether it's not selling, you know, um, so we're, we're not on a, we're not out of line with this. And, well, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, wood. of course I point to sales that are pointed to one sale that's lower. What right. I'd also point your attention to is this building is assessed at two and a half times what you know, some of the buildings that are half the size on that same parcel, part of that same strip are valued at. So, you know, that's not really consistent because this, the larger building is basically like two of the others put together, um, if you will. So some of the others are in the value range of, um, uh, the assessed value range on say 98 is 393, 100 is 446. So, uh, you know, it's it's still, eight, nine, you know, it's still a bit more than those as far as valuation wise, when frankly, sometimes you're better off with a smaller building that's easily, uh, more easily divisible than a big building that's really not meant to be divided. If, you know, from a practical aspect of leasing something, there are more people for small space than a 24,000 foot building, um, you know, right now. And it's not just Wallingford. I'm not attacking Wallingford per se. 
in general office is, is very difficult. I know you say you could get $45 a foot space, but you know, you can get a vacant building in Stanford for a hundred bucks a foot. It might cost, you know, whatever it costs to build it, it doesn't even matter. You know, the uh, former um, Swiss bank building, I mean, the, those buildings and, and some of the other big vacant buildings in Stra Stanford traded at well below, um, you know, what the former market would have indicated well below replacement costs. And frankly, that's a market where people were paying, you know, in the 30s per square foot for rent, um, you know, the question is, can you lease it? And that's why, you know, lenders have have done some deals like that. Also in Norwalk, markets that I'm more familiar with, I mean, a vacant office building is anyone's guess what it would sell for because the cost to maintain and upkeep taxes, insurance, maintenance is very high versus an industrial building. If these were industrial, I wouldn't be on the phone right now because they'd probably be leased. And, you know, I'd look at the numbers internally and say, okay, this makes sense. But frankly, you know, I, I don't think, you know, the value is, is where the town uh, believes it to be. And I could only point to that sale. I haven't looked at all the comps in Longford lately, but, you know, um, you know I'm not going to, you know, I pulled that 80,000 foot building because that's similar in size to this, uh, you know, these four buildings together. I'm not going to talk about something that's a million square feet or something that's 5,000 feet because that's not a fair comp in my opinion. Um, you know, but that's, you know, that's my position. When do you guys make a decision or ladies and gentlemen, when we, do you make a make decision tonight? Tonight. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know, you know, if there was a, a lead time or lag time where I could try to get something, but it takes to right now, the appraisers with whom we work are, are slammed, you know, they, they just don't uh, have the time. Um, Mr. Jackson, I mean, you have reviewed this um, and, and after the reval, um, you've adjusted the assessed values. Um, I mean, I think if we had something tonight uh, from an from an appraiser, um, would certainly, you know, have we would the board would have something to compare to your work and appraiser's work, uh, what have you. But uh, the fact that you've adjusted downward uh, already to me, um, you know, you've taken you've taken some of these issues into consideration. Yes, yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Can can the board hear me? Because I know I've I've had trouble with my microphone in the past. So uh, I, I think now is better than maybe you were earlier. So okay. And Mr. Donato, can you hear me? Okay. I can. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So you know, Thank yes, you. you know, and and you know, Mr. Donato and I had a conversation uh, prior to. This meeting uh, a couple of months back, I think, during the revaluation process, and I acknowledged that yes, the values of these office buildings, you know, are are coming down, and that's the trend, and we followed, we tried to follow that trend, and I think you'll see, on all of these buildings, we have reduced by a significant amount the value from where it was in 2015 to what it is today. And uh, let me move on from that to say that, you know, 15, the, the Sterling Drive property, for example, it was sold for 2.3 million. A lot of uh, condition issues on the interior of that building. Because if you look at the exterior, the building is a beautiful looking building from the right. outside. But on the inside, there are significant uh, uh, condition issues and for anyone who would purchase that building to repurpose it, it would require a significant amount of tenant improvements, a significant investment to really repurpose that building and get it back fully rented. Um, that building also, by the way, so we're, we're sitting, I think, our, our, our appraisal on that building somewhere on 3.2 or 3.3. I'll have to, you know, make allowance for my memory i've got a lot of numbers in my head right now but we're north of three million is our assessment as our appraisal on that building and a noteworthy fact it is listed 
for sale at over 5.2 million. Now, that's not to say that they will sell it for 5.2 million. And I realize that. However, that's that's you know that that property right there is really not a good comparable, uh, in my opinion. It's one property with 88,000 square feet. It's listed for sale at 5.2 million. You know, it was bought up at a time when it was almost completely vacant. I know that the Quest Diagnostics, which was the major tenant, you know, had really downsized their operations very significantly. And, uh, and that's why the building sold at that at that, uh, that lower price. And we're also seeing other office buildings sell for, you know, significantly lower prices that we have seen in the past. We recognize that. We recognize that. And we tried to factor that in to these buildings here uh, that, that, that Donato Enterprises, you know, own and operate on, uh, on uh, uh, South Turnpike Road. I guess what I would say is, Mr. Donardo, uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, is that you know, if we had an appraisal, if we had a little bit more, something a little bit more to go on, to compare reductions that we made against what you know another uh, you know another appraiser would come up with, we might have a, a better conversation than we're able to have tonight. Right now, what we have is the town has made significant reductions. And Mr. Donato feels that it's not enough, and I just don't see any documentation to uh, support that uh, support. Well, are we talking about if if you, you're talking about 102 and 104, or are we talking about the other three buildings at the same I'm time? Talking about all of the buildings you know, that you have okay. under appeal, sir, except for the one that, that has the apartment building. Uh, the one that's out front. Right, that was rejected. A vacant but, parcel of land. So there's those two separate right, from this. Right. You know, and I know the Board of Education is renting one of your buildings, and you know, I don't, I'm, I don't know the status of that lease. Maybe the board would like to hear about that. I don't know. Um, and, and I. And, well, the and board is still in the realize. building. They're they're one of the only tenants left. But on the other buildings. Uh, it, the value wasn't changed significantly. Uh, one was increased. One, the, the assessed value was increased on 94 to 96 um, from 2015 to 2020. And uh, 98 was reduced by, the assessed value was reduced by 20,000. And 100, which is the one occupied by the board was reduced from 560 to 446. So that was the biggest reduction, um, you know, in value on these buildings. But the other two were pretty close to where they were, you know, and one's higher, one's lower. So it's basically a wash on 94 to 98. Um, you know, those two buildings, one building is completely vacant and needs substantial work. You know, you, you touch upon something saying, you know, a building needs substantial work, but any office building generally needs a heavy amount of tenant improvement from tenant to tenant. You know, so yes, these buildings, you know, I think they're maintained pretty, you know, well, um, but inside getting another tenant in, um, you know, I wouldn't, I would suggest it's going to take a good amount of work to reposition, you know, there's old air conditioning systems that have to be replaced. There's always things to do. Um, as far as 94 to 96 South Turnpike goes, which is partially occupied by cerebral palsy of Westchester, you know, their lease was about to expire and we worked with them as a nonprofit. You know, we're, we're not really collecting the typical lease amount. They're just, you know, they, they said basically after COVID and the funding cuts and the fact that they couldn't bring people in, they wanted to hand the keys back. So, uh, in, to, uh, you know, in an effort to keep them there and hopefully stabilize them in the future, you know, we agreed to just take whatever they can pay because 
A, it's a nonprofit. It's not typically the position I take, but rather than have three buildings fully vacated, um, we felt, you know, due to the fact that it's a charitable operation and, uh, you know, we believe what they're saying based on the last year, uh, you know, it made sense for us to work with them. So, you know, while I appreciate the modification and reduction on 102 to 104, it still doesn't directly correspond to the other buildings because it's still higher on a per square foot basis. And the other ones weren't really lowered with the exception of 100. So, um, you know, if, you know, that, that's been my position. Um, so am I hearing that 101, 102 to 104 is okay, but you want to talk about the other ones? Um, and I, and I don't well, because you mentioned the, the other buildings. Take the, the chairman may want to take these one at a time. Okay, uh, fair enough. In the way of that. Yes, I, I would. I would take them one at a time. And, and again, I'm in. I'm in um, uh, the same mode as as Mr. Jackson. I, I think appraisals and a little more backup on all of this um, would have helped here uh, because I know Mr. Jackson in, in his office have gone through it um, and reduced it. Um, and I, I know you're, you know, you're looking for more, but I, I think we need more information uh, as a board, you know, why um why it should be reduced again just we're just not hearing enough you know backup form formal backup because um this this is you know some significant um dollars for you and for the town and and uh, um i think there needs to be again more work uh so, Mr. Chairman, if I'm hearing you, do you want a reserve decision on these until I can present an appraisal, or are these going to be denied and then I'm appealing them to court? I'm just trying to understand. Well, I, you know, because I'm I'm happy to present an appraisal to the board. I just, you know, right now, it's been a, a different, uh, you know, difficult well, process only, for us. Um, Our board operates under, you, know, you come, you provide us with the information, and, and we make a decision. Right, um, okay. If, if it's over a million dollars on some of these, uh, it's, again, in the best interest of the town and of the property owner sometimes to, to do it differently than coming here because it's a lot more involved. Um, and and what you're discussing here, there's a lot more. The market, you know, the tenant issue. There's a lot of things here, uh, and a lot of daily update in the in the commercial office market business that is changing the value. Okay, um, these values were set back in October um, 1st of, of 2020. I, I know the commercial office market is is ch changing. You know, every day, every week, every month since then, before then, you know, and, and we know that it's it's not, you know, going in, in the positive direction. Uh, but we as a town, um, you know, we really need to have, you know, appraisals and backup that are, you know, supporting uh, what you're requesting here. So. So, yes, right. I mean, I think I think. Uh, we make decisions the night we hear you, uh, and if, you know, especially in, in a group here like you have, um, the alternative means with appraisals and, and, you know, superior court may be a better situation for you to express, um, you know, your value and, and for discussion with, with backup. I don't know how long it would take to get an appraiser, but we, you know, we do wrap this up uh, shortly. Uh, we don't, this doesn't go on forever, these appraisal uh, or these uh, appeal meetings. So, how long do they go on for? We can go through them one by one. Uh, 
Um, sure. Where we, can, where we can vote on all of them. Um, uh, do them one by one. That's how they're uh, okay. All right. Impressed. So <clears throat> let's let least back up to the where we are here. Um, so the discussion is is hearing number 2020-122. And it's 102-104 South Turnpike Road. The talent is, is putting a market value of $720,000 on the property and the town currently has a value of $1,407,800. Based on our discussion, do I hear a motion from the board? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion for hearing number 2020-122 for 102-104 South Turnpike Road. No change. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we're going to move on to... Hearing number 2020-121, that's 100 South Turnpike Road. Mr. Donardo has placed the market value of $360,000 on the property and the town currently has a, a value of $637,600 market value. Okay, Mr. Donardo. So um, we might have talked about this in the last discussion, but if you can um, go through this building individually, so we understand what your uh, appeal is is asking or, or what you're stating. Right. Well, this building is actually leased by the Board of Education. Um, you know, so this one, you know, it's it's a bit different than the others because it's not a, a vacant building but that said you know the only way to value these is you know because they're you know they're right in the same script they're the same type of construction same size sites or at least this is um along with the adjacent three uh you know it's a similar property and you know for the reasons i stated about the other building i don't think you know the town's value uh, is is supportable um you know i will point you to another building that's a little closer by you know if you guys would like to look and I, again you know we don't have appraisal but uh 110 south turnpike road is 25,000 feet and it's 26,313 square feet 2 acres and the town's appraisal is three hundred and seventy-seven thousand four hundred dollars. Assessments two sixty-four, and that's the building owned by Masonic Care Corporation, which is exactly the size of the building that you're saying to me is worth a million four. Um, the building we're on right now is half the size of one ten South Turnpike. So again, um, you know, you did reduce the uh, assessment. From 560 to 446, probably based on overall market conditions. Um, but uh, you know, I would implore on you that that's not enough, um, you know, for this property. Um, sir. Okay. Um, so you say it's 110 South Turnpike Road, right? Yeah, that's an adjacent property, and I was just looking online um, at it. You know, I, I had mentioned the other Sterling property, but this is another comp, I think, you know, uh, to to my building, seeing it's next door. Um, Mr. Jackson, do you... Uh have uh, information about that building 110 South Turnpike? So, Mr. Chairman, and 
uh, I am working from memory, my knowledge of the building. I'm not looking at an actual document. Okay. I would tell you that Sonicare building, so it's divided into two accounts. Um, that property is partially exempt and partially taxable. The Sonicare organization, you know, they own a hospital, and much of the work that they do is considered to be charitable. It's exempt. Some of the work that they do, we have been able to tax them for, uh, and this is by way of legal opinions over the years. So that building there, um, we've divided that into a couple of different accounts portion of which is taxable, portion of which is exempt. So take just the square footage of the building based on the taxable amount. It's not really given an accurate count of what we're doing there. Okay, so it's, so it's not uh... it's, it's not it's not a comparable situation. And I'd be I'd be more than happy to send Mr. Donato I believe there's two accounts. And I know we have our chief appraiser on the line. He may have more knowledge about it than I do. That's my recollection. We'd be happy to send Mr. Donato a copy of accounts to show the breakdown of that building and what's taxable. That's, that's something that really, it, it really doesn't apply as a comparable, as a comparable property. Okay. Um, Notwithstanding what's available in the public, you know, online these days, you're saying it's it's a it's a different because generally not tax exempt property, it still has a value that's shown online, and either it's uh, you know the tax exempt or maybe a portion or a pilot is paid in my experience. But you're saying this one, the numbers you use are inaccurate or don't relate at all to the property. Basically, that's what you're saying to me. Well, I guess what I'm saying, sir, is that I would, I would prefer to give you an exact document to review because, you know, Wallington, as you know, we don't have a, an awful lot of online or internet access or resources. So I'm not sure what you're looking at. Uh, I'm not sure. Exactly. Well, I'm looking at the, the, you know, it says 110 South Turnpike Road, Vision Appraisal. You've placed these online and Vision attributed a value to the building is indicated by me 3774 and they show a value for improvements and they show the land value at 80,000 and then the improvements are 26,313 square feet and it says it's 2.02 acres so you know if it's without the information you have just looking at this um you know obviously it's it's a much different number and it was substantially reduced from your, your, you know, from the last time, from 2015, um, you know, so the numbers were substantially reduced. They were still quite low, you know, much lower, um, you know, than what we're even asking for. But, you know, I do like to point this to the board's attention and to uh, everyone's attention, and that's what I'm looking at. So, um, that's the same again, again. Um, what you're looking at on the vision appraisal website is only taxable property and you're not seeing the tax exempt portion okay. of, that, of that property and uh, I'm more than happy to share that with you. And so again, I think this goes back to, to the prior you're getting the full picture. That's the, that's the point. Yeah. I, I think this, you know, I, I'm going back to this is not, these are not things that we can do on the fly. We need to have, you know, documents and, and you know, backup uh, to really have a discussion about all of this um, because it's it's too critical to you as a, as a building owner and, and to the town now that we, we make sure we get this right. And um, we don't see what you're looking at, Mr. Donardo, and we don't see what Mr. Jackson might be looking at so we're we're you know we're we're operating without facts uh paperwork uh what have you so 
I, I understand, Mr. Mess. Chairman, and that may, would make your job virtually impossible to do it like this because if you don't have anything, you know, you're not going to just take, uh, you know, I, I understand you'd want, um, I get it. Um, what I will say is when an appraisal is done, you know, and I referred to it a 2014, 2015 appraisal, but, you know, arguably, any appraisal now would be lower than that time because the market has changed substantially, in my opinion, for that type of building. Um, but, you know, I, I'm not an, a certified, you know, I'm not an appraiser, yeah. but I just know the numbers of what I had in my file um, from when the bank, you know, was still in, you know, operating or taking over the buildings. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think seeing an appraisal for 2014. Uh, would would leave an impression that maybe you know is not good for the discussion, you know, because it is you know 2021 um, is not uh, going to be you know good for office space. I mean, it's just 2020 2021. Um, we know the values are are going in the wrong direction. So. Right. But, you know the town. The town has you know did reduce the assessed value here from 560 to 446, 400. Um, again, without without a lot of backup and and uh, you know factual backup, I think the board will will have to vote and make a decision on this property. So do I hear a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion on hearing number 2020-121. 100 South Turnpike Road, no change. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So we'll go to 2020-12098 South Turnpike Road. Mr. Donardo's place of value of 360000 on it, and the town currently has placed a Market value of 561,800. Again, uh, it was reduced from 420,000 to 393,300. Um, and the square feet in the building uh, 12,614. Mm -hmm. Mr. DiNardo, I, I think it's the same. It is. It's um, it's the same size, you know. As far as I, my understanding, you know, with you know online, it shows that these buildings are a couple hundred square feet uh, apart. But you know, we've always you know considered them uh, very similar to their. You know, we we attempt to lease them as the same size. We don't really make a distinguishing adjustment you know they, they're all on about two acres give or take and they're all about 12,000 square feet except for the bigger one which is 24 um, although the town shows 102 to 104 at 30,000 feet I never knew what they're measuring because I had it measured um, by uh, you know InfoQuest and you know we have a 24 a 20 percent discrepancy there but this one's basically the same as the other you lowered it as you said by 30 grand um and yeah, you know and we're, and i'm coming up again with you know 44 dollars a square foot uh only only because that's easy to to, to yeah work. understood and it's a smaller building uh like you said um smaller units to to rent um you know uh w which is true i mean if you're going to find anything coming back, it's going to be smaller entities, not not large uh, entities. Buildings and COVID and and large office spaces are, you know, going to be. Uh, uh, you, you can't know. give them away, but yeah, I agree yeah, with I, you. I, this I, building I, needs some work. I mean, it needs, um, you know, an interior. It, it needs a good amount of work comparative to the Board of Education <clears throat> building, and I suppose you guys would argue that that's, you know, there's some degree or some difference in value because the building that's leased by the board is in better shape inside. Outside, they're equal. Um, but, you know, this one, uh, you know, could need some heavy improvement money, 
and and that's sort of the the elephant in the room because based on the market it's hard to sustain it's hard to justify the cost with the increases in construction of doing a heavy interior improvement on a building where you could only get a certain amount of money in rent you basically aren't going to spend the same you know the amount of money for that you get in rent for um you know uh, for improvements because then you're just what it's a wash you know you don't try not to do that notwithstanding what we did for masonic care which was a bad deal um but yeah this building is uh you know it's uh, it was reduced by thirty thousand so um again i i mean i think it's a similar uh intent by the town as the other two properties and you know, I think, uh, you know, you're going to need an appraisal. You're going to need maybe, uh, you know, uh, a walkthrough, what, whatever to show, you know, improvements necessary, something to justify. I mean, I didn't, you know, your your values are, you know, half of what the town are. Uh, you're in the, you know, the $20 range. I mean, it's just the spread is, is um, you know, oh, Mr. Chairman, I understand your job and uh, the the board's job, and I appreciate you know your reliance or preference for evidence based uh, right. on an appraisal. But you have to realize something. You know, I do own millions and millions of square feet of buildings all over the place, and you know, I know what I paid for the building. I know what I would pay for a similar building, just right. based on the amount of the the potential the cost of the repositioning for a new tenant. So, you know, I always consider myself, even though I'm not an appraiser, you know, if I'm putting the, the you know, for the appraisal, if I put a, a pen in the appraisal, a check doesn't pop out. If I write a check, you know, you know, you sort of, that sort of relates in my opinion to what the market is. If it's a marketed property and, you know, whatever the appraiser says, you know, it, it doesn't really matter, but I understand the board's position in wanting that evidence. But, you know, I can tell you based on a developer that's done this my whole life, third generation, you know, I, I have a pretty good sense for what something would sell for, for some, you know, what we would pay for it for, you know, based on a non-user. So I don't think, you know, I, you know, I pull those numbers and they are half the town's numbers, but it's not like you have someone just pulling stuff that's never bought a building. I mean, I trade buildings, you know, as a, for a living. So I do want to, I just wanted to uh, make that statement I, I, for you. I understand. I just, again, as, as the board, we have to, uh, work, you know, uh, with you and the assessor's office on, on coming up with something. And, and we do need, you know, uh, independent, you know, help sometimes. Um, Understood. So. I get it. So do I hear a motion on um, uh do I hear a motion on 2020-12098 South Turnpike Road? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion on hearing number 2020-12098 South, South Turnpike Road, no change. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Aye. Okay, we will now hear hearing 2020 119 9496 South Turnpike Road. Um, Mr. Nardano has placed a market value of $360,000 on the property. The town has placed the value of Six hundred and seventeen thousand eight hundred dollars, uh, and actually this building uh, has gone up. So this building is this building is similar. Well, in size, is that? It's to me. It's the same building as the uh, other one. It's uh, 
same size, same. Correct. It's what this is the one that's that they are back to back. Is that is that how that goes there? Um, no, this is twelve thousand six hundred square. It's a it's a freestanding building. It's twelve thousand six hundred square feet on two acres. Okay. Um, The other building is the same, 12614. Correct. These are, these are the two that are on the north end of the property, right? The... Correct. Mm -hmm. So 617. So maybe um, I can ask you, Mr. Jackson, um, the value of this this property uh, has increased. Do you need the documentation now, Mr. Chairman? I'm going to ask, with your permission, if our chief appraiser can chime in as well. Um, Mr. Coons, could you uh, fill us in the appraisal on this? The assessed value went from 420. To Kevin, can you unmute your microphone? There you go. All right. Okay. Go ahead, Kevin. Hey, I, I did. Uh, I wrote a, a few brief memos on each one of these, and I again. Oh. Yeah. No, let me. Uh, you're right. Let me go over to the. Uh, that pile. Okay, so ninety eight. All right. Kevin, do you have any comments before I make my final comment? No, I in my memo to you, Shelby, I just I recommended that, that there not be a change on this property as well. There wasn't really much submitted for us to compare <clears throat> or to sort of pick through why it went up or down or so. Okay, well thank you for that. I appreciate that. So Mr. Chairman, uh for your benefit, sir, and for the benefit of the board, um I I, I do I I'm comparing these two properties. Mr. Donato is correct. Essentially the same. Correct. I, I have I have the two. Just double check myself here. Seems to be new by one year. I mean, I'm trying to find the difference. So just indulge me one more minute, Mr. Chairman. Okay. 
So I would ask Mr. Donato to describe for us the difference in vacancy rates between the two properties because that may account for the difference in value. After that, I'd be prepared to make a recommendation. The difference, well, this building is um, the one I, I mentioned earlier. It's partially leased uh, on a month to month basis. Um, to cerebral palsy of Westchester. However, the, uh, the the rent, you know, they're not paying, uh, you know, whatever we used to get in rent, we don't get, and they don't have a lease anymore. They're just staying monthly to hopefully one day be able to um, perform their services and pro provide their services to the community. But right now, uh, you know, someone's in there. It's warm. They're keeping the lights on, but the payment is diminished. It's it's not a you know. But yes, this building has a tenant, but there's you know nothing in there that would increase a, that should increase the value. That that's a little bit of a surprise. Notwithstanding, it's a twelve thousand dollar increase, but I, I'm not you know sure why it went up. So thank you, thank you, Mr. So, Mr. Chairman, the reason so these two these two buildings are in the um, pardon the the reason for the difference because the buildings are essentially very similar. The difference is because we factored in the rent difference in the rents. So, okay. based upon the you know the appellant's testimony, I think maybe a, a small adjustment on this one might be warranted. Uh, I you know I would certainly be able to. Support that so we're at uh, let's make sure we all agree on the numbers okay so we're, we're so it's 98 and 100 so we're dealing with 98 turnpike road and uh, I believe you're dealing with 94 to 96 we, we just quoted on 98 oh yeah was it 561 800 market value Oh, no, wait a minute, hold on. 96 South Turnpike, which the town has a market value of 617. I would um, encourage the board to consider something just under 600. All right, there it is. Okay. Market value. And the difference being that one is, you know, has, you know, is still deriving income that would support, you know, the value in that range. And perhaps, you know, we could ask Mr. Donato a little bit more about the rents, the expenses for the property. You know, if the board wants to know a little bit more about uh, how we should consider this property. Based well, on attached to this is the income valuation. Yes. When is the income um, for, is it for the prior year or do you have one for, 2020 because the lease expired in September of 2020. It, probably for 2019. It's the most oh, well, 19, right. yeah. 19, what, you know, it was different. But as far as the lease expiration was September 2020, and that's when they started paying month to month rent. So in 19, they were paying a, a much, you know, much higher rental for the space. So, so, um, you know, to, to 19, we're showing this property was probably worth over a million dollars based upon the actual income uh, 
but our, our value is much less than that, obviously, because we're factoring in market expenses, market vacancy rates, and we're using a 30% vacancy rate for office buildings across the board. That's what we're using for this property. You know, having said that, we're at, I'll, I'll reiterate what I said earlier. We're at six hundred and seventeen thousand eight hundred dollars, Mr. Chairman. Based upon the appellant's testimony, I would recommend something between five seventy-five, five ninety, in that range. And I leave it to the board to deliberate further. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to reduce the assessed value to $580,000. Second. Well, well, All in favor? Let's, let's, Wait a minute, you said assessed. I think you mean appraised, right? Market it was value. appraised value. Okay. Appraised value, I'm sorry. Appraised value. Which is the, yeah, the market value. Go ahead, Carl, restate it. I make a motion to reduce the market value, appraised value, to $580,000. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so the next one, where are we? On uh, 2020, 119, is that correct? I don't think I have another one with, with you on this, do I? 120-116, Mr. Chairman. 117? How about 119? We got one. Hold on. We just did 119, sir. That was 119. Okay, so we're doing 117. Sir. Sure. One too many computer screens going here, so. All right. Um, so this is 2020 117, which is. Um, South Turnpike Road, PID number 139-571. This is the land. Mr. Chairman, I'll quickly give you an overview. This is a parcel of vacant land uh, directly adjacent to uh, Serafino's restaurant okay. and directly adjacent to the, the appellant's other property, which is a mixed-use uh, office and apartment. It's, it's vacant land. Uh, there is an issue with the, the sewer line having to be brought in depending upon the use of the property. Uh, most recently, uh, last and this year, this was an appeal that was resolved and settled at around, I think, $193,000. Currently at um, $203,200, I would be, you know, I would be comfortable with saying to the board and to Mr. DiNardo to stay with what we did last year. Let's call it $190,000 for the parcel of land, which comprises 1.64 acres, according to my records. So you want to reduce it from 203200 to $190,000? I, I think that's a fair you know, to give some relief on this because we did settle this last year, and Mr. Donato can obviously, you know, you know, offer his opinion and his recollection of the settlement, and you know, and, and give the board the benefit of his opinion as well. Okay, um, thank you uh, for that. What I wanted to um, indicate is is this parcel was 
connected to the adjacent parcel, 76 to 90 South Turnpike. And what, so, so the prior assessed value on the land was much less before it was split. And I get, you know, land values can change uh, a little bit, but before the land was split, it was a uh, completely different, you know, the numbers were substantially different. They've since, you know, the, the total parcel of three acres was at $357,000 for 2017, 18, 19. And, um, you know, so we split part of it off. The part of it that was split off is substantially wetlands and also requires a major sewer upgrade, which Mr. Jackson is aware of. I believe the upgrade is in excess of $100,000. So while it's it, it, it was a nice thing for me to split it, if you take the two parcels together, I've increased my tax liability substantially by making the split because one, the adjacent parcel increased in value. And then, you know, this one jumped up and effectively it's not a, really a buildable piece without a sewer, you know, it's a major cost to do that. And so the market right now doesn't uh, dictate a, you know, we wouldn't put the sewer improvement in. And that's why I put a lower value on it because I just see it as a surplus land and, you know, highly encumbered by wetlands, um, you know, so that's my position with respect to that parcel. So if I can add to that, Mr. Chairman, everything that Mr. Donato said is significantly accurate. The difference in opinion we have is that the sewer, you know, to provide that additional sewer at, at a significant cost, absolutely correct if he were to build another development like he has in his approach and I can't remember off the top of my head but I'm going to say it's mixed use property with office on the first floor and 12 or 13 apartment units above Mr. Donato will correct me and I would appreciate Mr. Jackson you're fading in and out I can't yeah, I can only hear every other word so I'm, I'm sorry I'm hope I'm sorry so, so the, so the, so the, you know, the, the, the cost of the sewer is only in the event that you build another apartment building similar to what you have next door. Did you hear me on that, sir? I did. Yes, I thought so, it's related to development, but you're saying specifically right. apartments. Okay. Right. So there was, you know, and, and how many units do you have? Is it 12 or 15? I I can't remember. 12. So you have a 12-unit apartment complex with a retail on the a retail or office on the first floor. Office, so, correct. So there's what 13 or 14 units? You tell me. Well, 12 uh, residential units and one commercial unit. So 13 units. So if you were to build a 13 unit complex on this property, you would need to install that that sewer line. However, if you were to build another restaurant like they have next door or just a single office building or some other use, it's not it, it's not, you know, it, it's not definite that you would have to install that additional sewer line. If the sewer line is dependent upon the number of units, the occupancy rate of what you what you would uh, propose to build, and what you you know the, the, that sewer line uh, improvement requirement is based upon another 13 unit building. So, you know, it, you know I think the board needs to take that into perspective and understand that, you know, you know, if you're going to build 13 units, then the sewer line becomes feasible because you're spreading the cost over 13 units. If you're just building one or two units, then you may not need to even do that. And mm -hmm. you haven't really, you haven't really uh, solved that, that question. Yet. I don't think, I don't think, yeah. Well, I, I think other people in the town would disagree with your interpretation. And, you know, we were under the impression and informed by various people 
that, you know, any development's going to require an increase in that line, um, not trigger, you know, not 12 units or two units, but development of that parcel. And I believe part of the zoning conditions when the 12, the, you know, the 13 unit building adjacent building was approved was they were approving it and the sewer could be used for that, but future development would require the upgrade. And my last recollection of the upgrade is about $150,000. If I'm wrong, you know, if you have information that leads to otherwise, that's, well, great. If you're telling me the town would approve a development without a sewer upgrade, well, that's news to me. And so, you know, I say that under oath. I mean, you know, my impression is I have to spend at least $150,000, 125 to 150 dollars to uh, even use this parcel. And that's, you know, what I'm going on. So, so let me back up then. Based upon your knowledge, what was submitted to the town uh, when you got that ruling for the additional sewer line? Was it a, a, a was it an identical building to what you built next door? It's not. So I don't. We never submitted anything to the town. But when we reviewed the file, and keep in mind, this building was. Uh, taken over by us, you know, by the bank, and it took us three years to get a CO between wetlands and people in different departments. We we received, uh, you know, a mixture of opinions and positions over time on it, but we think, you know, we think we completed it, but, you know, I never submitted anything, but I was, uh, when I was reviewing the file, I saw, and it was discussions with, I believe, Casey, uh, you know, in the sewer department, they said development, future development would require uh, a major upgrade. And whatever numbers I saw would have been from 10 years ago in the prior owner. It's just that that has been reiterated to me, but I haven't had a, a, a vote or a commission tell me this. I rely on what engineers that work for me tell me and what I've seen, you know, coming back from the town, you know, that's that's what I have on it. So we haven't tried to do anything, um, but I do believe when we severed it, you know, the, the feedback from my engineers to me when it was subdivided was that if you want to use this land, you have to upgrade the sewer. So that's what I've heard from my people, and that's what I rely on. So you Mr. don't know, Mr. Jackson. What is the value of property? What is the value of the property with a hundred fifty thousand um, dollar sewer upgrade? I mean, um, so you're looking at three hundred, you know, with with uh, with everything. Is that uh, three hundred and fifty for um, an open an open piece of property on South Turnpike Road? I mean, I don't. I think there's uh, many open pieces like that right in, in, in that location. Well, we, we value it. You know, I, I don't think the current town's the value is reflected, um, you know, it doesn't reflect the sewer upgrade. And keep in mind, while the property is over an acre, um, it's, uh, it's just under, I think it's 1.6 acres. The um, a substantial portion is uh, wetland, so it's you know you have to go by what you can actually use versus you know the size. I can have 50 acres, but 45 are wetlands, so then I'm only figuring the value for the 45 acres. I attribute very little to wetland because it just it's a liability for taxes and you can't really use it. So um, the number I put on this property is you know. Based on my position, if I put the sewer line in, sure, it's going to be worth more money. I don't disagree. But without the sewer line, I basically see it as, you know, a parcel, you know, I, not with a negative value. I put down 50 grand, I think. But, um, you know, it's it's just it's it's not usable in its current form. Uh, for, and that's what I was told and uh, that's the feedback that's been given to me by the uh, through my engineers from the engineering department. Now that's that's all I know about it. Okay. Again, 
you know, there's a lot here that uh, uh, we don't know. Uh, a lot of numbers, a lot of discussion, a lot of engineering, a lot of a lot of different things. Um, so, um, do I hear a recommendation from the board to see if we can, you know, give some relief to to the current market value we've placed on it? Mr. Chair, I make a recommendation to reduce the market value to one hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I think that is all of them, Mr. Donardo, uh, except for the ones we didn't. I believe so, and thank you for your time. I do have one question, and it may be directed for and better addressed by Mr. Jackson, but as I look at these, um, you know, online, uh, you know, and I relate back to 102 to 104 South Turnpike, which you've already taken action on, I noticed the land value uh, is the same size two-acre parcel, but it's double that of the adjacent parcels. I also noticed the square footage the town is using is 30,800 square feet when we always thought the building's about 24 or 25. We do have some measurements on it, but I guess my question is, that would be a big swing in value. I'm not saying you, you could make a decision on it now, although you can't see that the land is double, uh, you know, 200,000 an acre versus 110 uh, for adjacent. But the square footage is something else that, you know, I, I thought had been addressed. And I don't know how, w what do I do to address that? I mean, because it's 20% swing. So that's you know, just a question I have. I'll answer that, Mr. Chairman. So uh, the board has taken its actions and that uh, is effective for the 2020 grand list. Uh, I would encourage uh, Mr. Donato to contact our office, take up these issues, uh, you know, uh, looking forward. Okay. Fair. Thank you very much. Thank you for everyone's time and attention to these matters. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay. Take care. You too. So we're going to move on to, I think, Mr. Magooder was uh, next here. So <clears throat> we're going to do appeal number or hearing number 2020-003, Robert Magooder. Um, I'm going to swear you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my belief. I do. Okay, and this is 327 North Elm Street. You've placed a market value of 297 on the on the property. The town has placed a value of. Three hundred and thirty-four thousand six hundred dollars uh, on the property, uh, and that's an increase from your last rebal. So, um, um, please go ahead and, and tell us uh, about your house and your appeal. Sure, um, I did provide some information. I'm, I'm assuming. It Correct. Everyone has it. Um, but the two issues I had with the appraisal, um, uh, one being that um, I could not find a home of my size or anywhere in the, in the town of Wallingford that sold for that price in the last two years. Um, I, did, I did provide some comps. And also my home is valued significantly more than my neighbor's similar size homes. So those are my two biggest issues. Um, and I guess the third issue is, um, I purchased a home in 2014, um, and at this point now, with the last evaluation, which I also had to um, um, talk to you folks about, saying the value of my home has increased full over $60,000 in the last five years, which uh, I'm just looking for somebody to verify or support that for me. When I did speak to Vision Government, uh, the assessment company, the first time, the, the gentleman I spoke to agreed with me, so I was a little surprised to find that there was no adjustments made. Um, so let me 
Hold on. Uh, let me just keep looking through the documents here. <clears throat> So currently, uh, the, we have the town uh, assessor's office has reviewed um, the market value of 334,600, which is an assessed value of 234,200. Um, so the notes are the subject property was purchased for 272,500 July of 2014. Um, the current owner has done over $40,000 worth of improvements to the property. The detached garage shed is prefab without a permanent foundation. Like, yes, yeah, so I, okay. So to adjust the overall condition of the home and change the quality grade of the detached garage, resulting in a new market value of 316.9. So that's that's what the assessor's office has done um, and has recommended prior to um, the appeal. I, I've never seen anything with 368 on it. It, it just yeah, th this is what they're recommending, uh, and this is based upon all your information. And it was just uh, uh, done this week uh, and submitted to the board. That's their recommendation. The sure. So, a, so a twelve hundred square foot ranch uh, is worth three hundred sixty-eight thousand dollars. When my my neighbor's no, 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 three hundred sixty-eight thousand. Oh, 316. Okay, my apologies. I'm, 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 uh, again, I still, I, I still think that's too high. Um, as you can see, my next door neighbor's home, who is almost 1,900 square feet, is assessed at 277. I, I don't understand. Wait a minute. Assessed at 277? No, I'm sorry. The math, the market value was 277. Okay. All right. Mr. Jackson, uh, Mr. Coons, do we have any uh, allotment or, or allocation for the wetlands behind the house here? Is there, is that been adjusted for on this property? Do you know? Unmute, I'll unmute your microphone, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Are we allowing for that? Kevin, is, is are we allowing for any wetlands in the in the back of the property? My apologies. I was trying to look for the field card oh, in the uh, I, I, I thought you were still muted. Uh, so oh, okay. This um three seventy four, right? Three three twenty seven. 327. Yeah. I'm just trying to find the documents here or the field card. Yeah, I. Uh, I'm trying to use a Mac, which I'm not familiar with, so this is difficult. Uh, let's see here. I'm not, I, I don't remember which, what coding it is for. Uh, for that allowance so it would be it, any land adjustments would be at the bottom of the field card on the left hand side there's a few landlines um actually if you go towards the middle on the bottom of the field card any under the condition there may be an adjustment location adjustment no. yes or condition adjustment, possibly. <clears throat> condition. All right. One. Yeah. So that if condition at 100% or, or one, that means there's no adjustment for any kind of topography, wetlands, etc. Okay. Well, so what, what, 
in regards to that because because it is it is wet back there i i know you know there have been other um houses that have come uh from there and there's some wetland issues in the back there okay generally what we would do is maybe ask for if there's any type of a wetlands map that, that they're aware of. okay you know, uh, what, what that department so there's a stream uh, that runs through the back of my yard Um, so if, if the condition it was something other than one, all right, one means there is no condition issue. Is that what? Correct. That there's been no adjustment for it. Okay. So what kind of adjustment would, would happen for stream wetland like that? Maybe depending on the, uh, maybe five to 10%. Okay. <clears throat> um. Okay, I, I think, uh, you know, we've, you know, the assessments are off, has dropped it, and uh, I think because what you stated in here about the uh, the wetlands, uh, we'll take a we'll take a little a little uh, better look at it. And I guess my biggest thing is I'm just trying to understand how my property at this point is worth, you know, uh, you know, twenty five to thirty five thousand dollars more than my neighbors who homes whose homes are of equal. You know, if not larger than mine with square footage. So, well, um, again, between the reval and going in, uh, I don't have you know all the information on your neighbors, uh, and I don't you know I don't know what the condition of theirs is. I don't. Uh, I have numbers for theirs. Uh, What, which house in particular are you talking about? My next door neighbor is 325 North Elm, uh, but then also 319 as well. They're they're both right next to me, and they're both in value substantially less than mine. That's why I was just looking to keep my assessment where it was. And I was looking for did, did their stay. Did their stay where it was? I'm sorry. Did their assessment stay where it was? Uh, actually, my next door neighbors went down. The brick um, house. Uh, 325, correct. Um, and then uh, 319, which, as you can see from the photos, is a very nice home. Yep, correct. <laughs> um, I know the house, and I know the house next door to that. They did a lot of work in there. Yeah, um, that home uh, there, hers actually went up by, it looks like $3,000. Um, and they do have a granted they have a little bit less property than I do. So yours, right? Yours is the town of three sixteen. Two twenty one. So Okay, I think, um, uh, you know, I think 
uh, we'll probably be able to allow you a little bit more. I mean, we're we're at the three sixteen um, nine, I think it is. Do I hear anything from a board member? I make a motion to reduce the market value to three hundred and ten thousand dollars. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. Can I just ask one more question? Um, I was concerned with the original evaluation. Um, I, I don't understand. I, now, this is twice I've been in front of the board, my last two evaluations, where it was significantly higher than is, is it has something to do with um, some kind of an algorithm or something that my home is stuck in. Um, I just hate to waste everybody's time to have to do this every five years. Mr. Uh, Chairman, if I may. Okay. So this is Shelby, the assessor. Um, sir, I would encourage you to speak directly with our office if you have. Okay. Have you? Did you? Speak to uh, no, I have not spoken directly with the assessor's office, no. So, you know, I would encourage you to do that. That's the first step because, you know, we're a very, uh, you know, resident friendly office and we're willing to sit down and go over things. Many times, there's a property that has unique features that the assessor is, I'm, I'm gonna try to speak closer because sometimes I go in and out. Uh, many times there are properties that have unique features that you know the property owner knows much more about it than the assessor office would. And when you sit down with us and call us and talk to us, you know we can have a much more productive conversation and get to the heart of the matter. So. I would encourage you in the future, you know, if you have any question, first step is call the assessor's office. Speak with, and, and you know, if you speak with a staff member. Okay, you don't I appreciate that. Involved, ask for the assessor. That's the way to do it because, you know, we want, we want to, we want to get it right. Believe me, believe me when I tell you, we want to get it right. And we don't want to, we don't want to have to. I'm sure you do. Put, put you through this coming to a board and everything else if there's something that we can figure out on our own. I, I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All righty. Have a good evening. Thank you, gentlemen. You as well. Thank you. So I, I think uh, Aaron and Mac uh, Massey uh, were next, so we'll, we'll take them. Hi, how are you? Good. Um, Chase. So uh, me, I do want to. Uh, let me find your paperwork, and then I'm going to swear you in, and then we can we can start. So. <clears throat> Hold on, let me just <laughs> Is this four pen drive? Yes, it is. Okay, all right. Okay, so this is hearing number 2020-020. Matthew and Aaron Vesey, Four Pen Drive. I'm gonna swear you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. I do. I do. Okay, you've placed a market value on the property of two hundred and thirty thousand dollars based on a recent appraisal. Also, the fireplace doesn't have a chimney and is unusable. House also has original 1957 window um, and is in fair condition. Okay. So go ahead. You can uh, tell us tell us some more about your house. Sure. So uh, we purchased a house in December of 2019. So we've been here just about a, a year now. And this is our first time going through 
uh, an appraisal process. So I just want to mention that because when I, I'm a person of questions. So don't be offended if I ask because I just may not understand the process. Um, so a couple of things that we are uh, wanting to take a look at is, as I said, in, on the property card, there is a fireplace, but it is not functional. There is no chimney exiting the roof of the house. Also, the UEP unfurnished porch, uh, which is rated at 48.8 unit cost. That is actually a very small um, concrete pad that was used to be the original concrete pad of the carport. There uh, really is nothing fancy to it. And I am questioning uh, why it would not be rated the same as the front porch step, which is a unit cost of 19.52. Also, there is uh, a half bath that was in the basement when we purchased the home, but the home was in uh, pretty poor condition. And based on the uh, inspection that we had of the home, they suggested to not use it. It was unusable. Um, so that has been removed. Uh, we took that out. So I wanted to mention that as well. You have our kitchen rated as an average condition. Uh, however, we believe it should be below average due to the condition of the cabinets and the small amount of the cabinets and just um, their original 1958 cabinets with zero upgrades since the original um, building of the house. So there it's, it's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, here. the walls are pretty much stripped from wallpaper. So now the um, the joisting and everything on the side is kind of poking through. Um, yeah. So also there's uh, significant water damage on the wall that is between the dining room and the kitchen due to neglect of the previous owner. Um, there is a bad roof leak and um so we're dealing with that right now it's uh it's it's really not in good shape at all everything's rusted it has to be evaded um mostly we're going to be doing a mold test to see what's going on in there uh another thing is the main bathroom which is rated as average uh we had found significant floor rot underneath the toilet and the tub and also wall rot due to a window that was within the shower stall. So I am uh, asking to have it be put as below average for the rating. Uh, that, that bathroom is gonna need to be gutted and completely redone. We're pretty much, there's a portion of the floor that we're falling through the floor. So it's unusable at the moment. We've had to shut off the plumbing until we have money to make some adjustments and upgrades. And also I would like to mention from the last assessment in 2015 to, to now, or to the new one, 2020, the previous owner, Raymond Hurlbert, he was uh, an elderly gentleman in, in his 90s and he was actually in arrears of his taxes around $32,000. Uh, just because he didn't have the money to pay them. And so that is also reflected in him not being able to put money into improvements in the up, like the regular upkeep of the house. So there, um, I don't see how a justification of an increase in uh, this much of a market value of the house could have taken place in the past five years when there has been literally no improvements at all. It's only just been degrading. I also would like to mention that I had sent in some property cards of recent uh, houses in our area, one of them being 91 Pond Hill Road. 
which is right around the corner from us. It's actually one of the properties that was mentioned in the appraisal that was submitted as a comparable house to ours. Uh, this house, the assessed value from 2015 to 2020 was 162,500 and an increase to 165,600, which is only an increase of $3,100, whereas ours had increased uh, almost $30,000. And their assessment value uh, increased only 1.9% and ours increased 7.9%. And in another case of 18 Reskin Drive, which is another house that's 0.9 miles from ours, it's the next street over, uh, that had a pretty comparable um, appraisal value of $235,000 and an assessment of 164.5. And their assessment actually went down a few thousand dollars and decreased in percentage 2.9%. So I don't see how these comparable houses and properties in our area are, are minimally increasing and, this, and one is decreasing, but ours is significantly increasing when there had been no improvements to the house at all. And half the time it was in, um, in a, ownership of an estate because the gentleman had passed away. So I'm just asking to relook at the value of the home. I just don't feel like it is being fairly uh, valued. Okay. Yeah. What, uh, what grade do we have on uh, the uh, You have it at the Steve Quest currently. All right, I'm, I'm asking I'm asking Mr. Coons, so let me ask Mr. Coons. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I I put I don't have that field card in front of me at this point. It sounds like a C plus. She's probably correct. I do have a memo here um, from Ian that was written, and he has a recommendation of. Um, he reviewed everything that was submitted with the appeal and he his suggestion is to change the condition of the, the overall condition from i believe what's in average condition now to fair condition and that would change i'm trying, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to find that so um, <clears throat> okay this, this file is, is kind of long and things are placed yeah. all over it so um okay let me uh okay now i got to that okay go ahead um yeah. look, ian's recommending that we change the, the the overall condition from average to fair okay based on everything they submitted in their testimony tonight um so his recommendation would be to change it to 247,800. And that's um, that's fair market value. And that's that's from uh, him changing the uh, condition. Yeah. May I ask a question? question at all? Have we uh, looked at this uh, directly? I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Have we been out there to the house, or just just uh, field review eight fifteen twenty, right? That means uh, vision vision did a field review on it. Um, I'm going to try to pull it up here. Exterior on uh, ten twenty one nineteen measured the exterior and the field review on eight fifteen twenty. What what date did you uh, buy this house? Uh, December seventh, twenty nineteen. 
Okay, 815 2020 field review. Okay, so a couple things here. Um, you, you, the grand list is based upon the value of the house on October 1st, 2020. That, that's the uh, point in time that we're uh, determining the value of the house. Okay, so when you see these, you know, increases, um, you know, the real estate market in that time frame last year was, was pretty good. It still is pretty good. Uh, and numbers are going up. So to have an increase um, is, is really, it, it is market driven. Um, it's not driven by the town. It is driven by uh, what's happening in, in the market. So um, values back in 2019 are going to be different than values today values back in 2015, you know, when that reval was done are, are going to be different than today. Um, so buying the house in December of 2019 uh, was a good thing because you, you bought before the buying, you know, frenzy of 2020. Um, sounds like a lot, you know, a lot of things are need to be repaired in the house, fixed up in the house. Um, you know, we are reducing uh, based upon review by assessor, office, by Ian, um, from the current market value of 258.7 to 247.8. Um, You know, I think the board, you know, you've, you've done a good job explaining. There's a lot of information that you've you've put here. Um, you've done a lot of work to um, provide the board with uh, updates, values, uh, what have you. Um, so I think the assessor's office worked on some of it. And I think uh, um, I think the board might have some recommendations also. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I recommend uh, we reduce the market value to $245,000. Second. 258.7. Okay, second by Mr. Avery. Uh, mm -hmm. Aye. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So I appreciate that decrease. However, um, that is still around a without doing the math, it looks like a 5% increase. And if you're seeing that the grand list is based off of, is market driven, then it should be a comparable increase compared to what our neighbors' home values are worth. So if our neighbors are only go, going up 1.9%, 2%, um, ours is still raising by 4 or 5%. Well, maybe well, maybe, in last, maybe in the last reval, theirs wasn't at the right place. So bringing them up one and a half percent brings them into the right right place. So, but but the new value is the 2020 value. Right. So maybe I'm not understanding what you're saying is that if they're being put up to the right place and it's only going up two percent. Ours should be put to the correct place as well. And with no money being put into the house for improvements, well, then it should only that be driven by market value. The house is what brings the house up. In, in today's real estate market, a lot of houses are selling without necessarily, you know, a lot of improvements. It should the, the demand for the product, demand for the inventory is so high right now. And and again, back in 2020, October 1st was was a significant, you know, uh, shortage of houses, and therefore the demand was very high. So. Okay. Okay. So, uh, do you have anything to say? 
Are you good with these? Do you agree with this? Not really. No, that's the decision. So if the appraisal that we submitted was for 230. The board has made a decision and, and you'll be getting notification from the board. So. Okay. Thank you. Well, can I still have one more question? I will allow one more question, sure. I appreciate that, thank you. So the appraisal that I submitted was for $230,000. And when was um, that appraisal done? It was done at the time of purchase of the home and it was a time that the appraisal was done at the home. Okay, there was so- There's a time that you would assess the value. 2019. Say again? The market's December of 2019 when you purchased the home or prior to that, House values were significantly different than October 1st of 2020. Okay, I understand that. Thank you. So, okay, thank you. Yes, thank okay. you for your time. I appreciate it. Correct. Okay, so I um, uh, I don't know who was next. So, caller nine, caller 12, and uh, uh, Jared uh, Liu. Um, I don't know. Um, Jared Lou, why don't we why don't we go with you and then caller nine and then caller twelve? Hey, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Good evening. So let me back up and find your appeal. Okay, I'm gonna swear you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my uh, knowledge and belief. Yes. Okay. So this is hearing number 2020-001, Jared and Kristen Liu, 59 Curtis Avenue. You placed the market value of 159,200 on the property. Town. Has placed the value of three eighteen one hundred, three hundred eighteen thousand one hundred. So um, please go ahead and tell the board about your house. Yeah, do you have the ability to let me share the screen so I can show you some pictures? Um, it says to share screen, ask the organizer to make you presenter. I am not the organizer. So, so Mr. Chairman, um, we asked that anything that would be submitted to the board be submitted in advance so that we could share it with the public one day in advance of this meeting. And, and we do have pictures that were would you would you mind actually just showing me the pictures you have? Because I looked at the file online and they're basically just, I mean, black blobs. So I, I'm I'm worried that you can't actually see those. So, so just give me a minute, sir. Let me think about this. I want to make sure that I'm following the proper protocol for freedom of information and other other requirements. I want to make sure that we give you every opportunity and we also protect the public. As well, so please, if you just give me one moment to contemplate, would that be okay? Sure, and I'm only asking to be able to show you what was submitted. Okay, well, well then you should certainly be able to do that. Just give me one moment. Thank you.
Yes, I have a series of exhibits that were submitted. And, um, you'll, you'll have to forgive me because I'm uh, trying to learn technology as best I can under sometimes difficult circumstances. So how do we, sh I can share my screen. I have an option to share your screen, is that what you're telling me? Mr. Liu, did you hear my question? I did not, you kind of fade in and out. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry about that. That's, that's happened in the past. So I have your exhibits and uh, I can try to bring them up if you if you're not able to but you say that you are able to bring them up i have them on my computer but the button says to share your screen ask the organizer to make you presenter so i believe i need the ability to share my screen first well i can share the screen but i don't know that i can make you a presenter that's what i'm trying to figure out his his desktop will become visible to us. Yes. Okay, let's go. Go ahead. As long as as long as you're the organizer, Mr. Jackson, and you allow um, allow that. Hey. Okay. Right. So there Do you my go. Best. We're 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 heading into new ground here. <laughs> Happy to be there with you. Oh, I'm mm -hmm. just gonna put it onto a different. Here we go. You can see a chimney. Correct. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So thank you. Um, so I would like to make an appeal on two grounds. Uh, first, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, uh, you know, you obviously spend a lot of time with comps, but I think the comps are uh, a little bit off. I, I uh, gave you some comps from around the time when I submitted this proposal that were similar in terms of bedroom, bathroom, and square footage size, and were simply based on houses that had sold recently, uh, and they were considerably lower. Um, but that's where I come to the starting point of, I believe the assessed value for a house in good condition should be 255,200. Um, as it is actually, uh, I know you, you, you're based on October 1st as being your assessed date. Uh, there is a house on our street that is listed currently that's a pretty identical footprint uh, of four bedrooms, one and a half bath, almost uh, you know similar square footage. Uh, and you can actually go on Realtor.com right now and look at you know it's got a nice granite kitchen, finished third floor, efficiency windows, nice hardwood floors throughout, full driveway, and it's listed for less than our house. Um, so I mean I think uh, just well, what, what is it? What is it listed for? Uh, I was listed at 320 something. So, uh, you know, like I said, I, I think the, the starting point of the assessed value is different, but where I wanna focus my time here is on the condition of the property. Um, and so a lot of this, uh, we had suffered an incident in August of 2020 um and uh, we are looking at significant repairs um when the uh when the assessor from vision came out uh, we actually did take some pictures uh, that was actually slightly earlier i think i think he came out before august uh, but we did take some pictures on the day when he came out and i'll, I'll tell you which ones are the pictures i said i said this in my letter too so that you can get a sense for what did he actually see when he came out and obviously he only saw the outside but I'll take you through some pictures on the inside as well. So here's the first picture. Um, we have a chimney that is uh, in pretty bad condition. Um, and, and all of the figures that I'm gonna give you, we've actually these jobs, uh, if for most cases with multiple contractors. So the numbers that I gave you, those are uh, the, the estimates from the contractors for the repair that has to be done. Uh, you know, so here you see a chimney that uh, is in jeopardy of falling down. Um, and we are planning to have this work done, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, early this spring. We have a contractor who we have uh, is scheduled with to um, actually rebuild this <laughs> chimney. So you can't just repoint this chimney at this point, it has to be rebuilt. Uh, and they're gonna take it down uh, below the roof line by several feet to rebuild it. Uh, here you can see uh, condition of roof and siding in some places. 
uh, and the siding has blown off in uh, several places along the house. And so we're gonna have to replace uh, all of the siding. This is from the incident that happened in August. Uh, and uh, you know, hopefully that gives you a sense there. Um, the gutters are clogged and you can see they're in bad condition. You can also see a fair amount of mildew on the roof as well, you know, further giving you a sense of the condition of the roof. Uh, and the side of the house here, you can see the retaining wall on the left-hand side. Um, this actually is something that uh, we are slated to fix in a future year, uh, just because it uh, it looks like it is uh, it's not moving massively every year as we've been in the house about five years. Um, but you can see that uh, the retaining wall is not in good shape. Uh, the moment that that moves considerably more, obviously that becomes an emergency repair, um, but we have had uh, some folks look at that, um, but the retaining wall is gonna be a significant expense as well. Uh, last time I came before you, uh, which was in 2015, soon after we had moved in, um, we had a challenging situation of having bought a fixer upper and finding that the repairs that were needed to the house were considerably more than we had estimated. Uh, some of it, I think, verged on libelous, not that we're litigious people, um, but um, the, a lot of the foundation on the inside had been filled with caulk. Uh, and so we discovered that only after purchasing the house and set about repairing that. Uh, so I just don't want you to think that we haven't done anything since we last came before you. Uh, repairing the foundation, uh, you know, and the, the, the dual walls of the foundation, there's the interior and the exterior. So we had primarily focused on the interior. We spent uh, a lot of time and uh, expense fixing the interior of the foundation, but here's a picture of the exterior foundation. Um, and then uh, the last picture I have from the day that the uh, assessor came out, here's the porch, and you can see the area over to the right. Um, the porch is actually falling apart in places, uh, and we had uh, that part replaced because those boards punched through. Um, they were completely rotted, uh, and there are other boards that have punched through as well, but the porch is not in the best shape. Um, so I think you can see as a starting point that um, you know, the house showed to be in um, you know, below average condition even on the day that it was visited. Oh, sorry, I did have one more exterior. Here's the shed. Um, the shed uh, is almost kind of like a greenhouse on the outside. Uh, it, it has uh, some nice uh, floral and fauna for you. Um, it's actually taking some water in and we're gonna need to replace that sooner rather than later if we wanna save the shed. Okay, so obviously the uh, inspector couldn't see the inside when he came out, but I do want to show you uh, we have some challenges on the inside. This is the chimney that you saw on the outside, uh, and you can see that it needs to be rebuilt down several feet on the inside, uh, has a number of uh, bricks that are crumbling. But what you can also see here, and this, if, just to orient you, this is looking up. Um, you're looking up towards the peak of the roof, and so that bow um, that is actually uh, um, a collar tie. So all the collar ties are warped. Uh, we had uh, some quotes come out recently of uh, what it would cost to replace these collar ties. Um, but this is something that, although you know, not quite the same structural level of the floor joist, um, this is important. We need to get these taken care of as well. Um, you know, these are like purfling strips that are here. So like they're not two by tens like they should be. Um, this is a view of the fence that is falling down. I actually talked to Amy Torrey uh, a few weeks ago about uh, the process that's involved with replacing a fence. Um, this fence actually, part of it actually fell onto uh, our neighbor's property. Uh, so this is something that is now failing and we need to take care of uh, immediately. Um, but from talking with Amy, uh, I may have underestimated the value of repairing the fence because it's not just the cost of the fence, but apparently we need to do a $2,000 uh, site survey uh, in preparation for that as well. Um, so uh, fence work will be coming. Um, and then I wanted to show you too that uh, the third floor, which is, well, it's an attic. Um, I know it's not uh, reflected here as square footage, which is good because it's not livable space, um, but we do have plaster walls in some places throughout the house that are not in great condition. Uh, I didn't just punch a wall, I didn't punch a hole here for you just uh, for the effect. Um, you know, these are things that 
uh, as you can see from those other pictures, we have things that are critical needs that we're working on repairing. And so, you know, to some extent, we are living in a condition uh, with holes in the wall and uh, uh, cracks in the window, just because those are not immediate things that have to happen as we work on, you know, things like the foundation and the chimney. Um, one of the next things that we need to get to is the, the returns for the plumbing. Uh, so the the other thing that there like there were two things that we've really been working on since I last came before you, the interior foundation and then the the plumbing supply. Um, so we had a lot of lead pipes uh, and uh, and leaking pipes on the supply side for the plumbing, and so we've been working on replacing and repairing those. Um, and then the next is we have uh, uh, you can see uh, some returns that are tremendously rusted. Uh, in some cases, they are leaking. And actually, I think in maybe the next picture, oh, you'll see in the, I've got another picture of return where the previous tenants had epoxied uh, in order to keep it from leaking as much as it did. Here's a picture of interior roof. I mentioned that we had an incident in August um, that uh, punched some holes in the roof. Uh, and so here's one where it, it, uh, it came through and we've had to put a, an emergency repair on it. And this is something that, again, we have a contractor who's coming out uh, pretty soon to deal with this. Um, right, so here's the one that's got some epoxy on it. And you can see they just sort of plugged holes and drilled wherever, um, but we're gonna need to work on the, the plumbing returns. Uh, and there's the main stack. You can see similar condition. Uh, and then uh, again, the incident in August, um, we had two uh, very mature trees that offered nice shade in our property uh, and we think added considerably to the property value uh, and they were damaged in the storm. Uh, so this, in full disclosure, is not what the assessor saw when he came out. Uh, this is the, the day the trees came down, um, but our backyard is now uh, sort of like a BMX racetrack uh, as we uh, will need to uh you know the the landscaping that i put here is not a like a nice to have uh this is the backyard is uh you know a mess of sawdust and uh mud um so this is something that we're going to need to uh, regrade and reseed the entire backyard uh, and i think this is the last one that i have i mentioned that uh you know there are some things that are just sort of what we're living with at the moment as we work on emergency repairs. Uh, and so here you can see, uh, you know, we do have cracked windows. Um, we don't have sort of nice uh, high efficiency windows. We have sash windows that are odd sizes everywhere. And uh, for anyone who's had sash windows, um, you know, these things break somewhat regularly, uh, especially as the, the sort of the, I guess you would call it caulk. I'm not sure what they put around the edge as, uh, as those things start to fail. Um, so, you know, we have some cracked windows in the house. Um, one of the things that I did put in the appeal as well was uh, we have two chimneys. Um, and so you, you have in your packet also a, um, a quote from a chimney repair um, contractor who came out to certify for us that the chimney that's tied to the fireplace had cracks throughout it and he did not recommend that we use that. He said it would seep carbon monoxide into the house. Um, that has been taken care of now uh, and we literally just spent $6,000 to uh, repair that chimney so that is in usable condition. So we're working on these things. Um, you know, we don't have unlimited funds and I would say that's the basis of the appeal, which is, um, you know, we appreciate you working with us. Uh, we're certainly aware that, you know, one of us losing a job could make it so that, you know, with the amount of repairs that have to happen to the, the house, um, you know, suddenly we could be suddenly in an, you know, uh, uh, uncomfortable situation, not able to sustain what has to happen. So we're working on it. Um, and we have not been idle in the time that uh, has gone by since we, uh, we last came before you. And we'll just appreciate uh, your continued patience in this. And thanks to Mr. Jackson for uh, working out the share screen. Okay. Um, so back in 2017, we reviewed 
the property then. Um, and I, th I think we reduced the assessed value to 219,800. Is that correct? I would have to take your word for it on the exact value. Um, you know, the letter I received, I think, said 343 was the new assessed value, but uh, I'll, I'll defer to you on what the amount is. What you, that is correct. The new assessed value is, yes, the letter says, um, I think, uh, you, got the, you got that from whom? Vision uh, at three. 43,200, and uh, the town has already reduced it to 318,100, okay? And during the, during the informal appeal process, the condition of the subject property was reduced from good to average, right? So uh, that, that's already taken place on the informal vision appeal process, which you're probably not aware of. That's, the assessor's office did that, um, and that's reported in the package today. I did speak to a gentleman named Jim, I believe was his name. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I think that was in December. I could pull up my notes, and I did make the case to him that the condition was not, uh, uh, not good. Um, uh, and I was aware that he said he was looking at downgrading the condition, um, but you know I I I, I okay. think you can see and, that. And right? So so that that puts it at an assessed value of two twenty two seven hundred. Prior to that, the assessed value was two nineteen eight hundred. Okay, so um, we're you're you're back to you know, prior, uh, almost back to your, your $3,000 away in assessed value um, from where you were before the reval. So I'm just pulling up the letters that I received. I don't remember any of them starting with two. Well, this is assessed, not... There's assessed and there's appraised. The appraised is the market value. Yeah, I've been talking market value. Correct. Where I'm, I'm talking, uh, I'm talking assessed value. So as the house is right now, as of March 1st, with the reduction from good to average, the market value is 318.1. All right. But also, prior to that, the market value was 314. So you've only gone up $4,000. In market value, forty-one hundred dollars. So are you looking so, for a response? Sure. Uh, so that's better, certainly, than three forty-three. Uh, again, like the basis of my appeal is, I think it has not been understood the condition of the property. Um, I mean, I I would be happy to schedule a time if, you know, if Rhonda wanted to come out, um, you know, she did come out, what was I think in 2015 and uh, obviously different, you know, pandemic times then or non-pandemic and, you know, we were able to show her some aspects of this, but like I said, we, we suffered a pretty major incident in August. But you, but you, you place a market value on it of $159,200. All right. Yeah, I, so mean, I, I mean, that, you know, you lived with it at 314 when we when we did the, you know, in the 2015 to 2020 time range, and and we've we're now at 318. Um, yeah, that's a far cry to 159.2. Yeah, and I, I, I just on it. sorry, go I, ahead. Just, I just don't, you know, I, you know, I think we're staying within the guidelines. Uh, on the boundaries of, of where we were prior, even though you have, you know, some issues, continuing issues, because I, I remember this, you know, uh, these issues in the last reval. So, um, 
you know, you you have the same issues, uh, if not maybe some more. I don't I don't know. You know, I'm trying. I don't remember exactly what you know what went on in the when you had just bought it, right? You just bought it in, in that last round. When did you buy it? 2017, 2016. 2015, yeah. And so what I've tried to lay out for you is I think the assessed value, the market value is high, right? So if you're at 318, I'm saying I think the starting point should be 255, but we have suffered new incidences, right? So when you look at the roof and the siding, that's $53,000 that we're about to pay out of pocket for an incident. Well, where's that your, well, wait a minute. That, that's, where's, there's insurance to cover that. That, you know, yeah. that. The house should be repaired back to what it was via the insurance company. So we can't absorb the loss, all right, of that, whether whether you pay for it out of pocket or not, but your insurance should be should be covering that that. So repair. what I'm saying, and, and I can talk about the insurance process in a moment, but what I'm saying is any what any buyer who would come look at this house would say, there are holes in the roof. I will not pay. 318, I will take off, you know, $33,000 to repair the roof. And so the condition of the property is quite below average. So in working with the insurance company, th they started us with an estimate of $5,000 uh, for the re repair work because uh, the way they're based is on, um, is on replacement value. And so we have paid uh, several thousand dollars out of our own expense to hire an insurance adjuster to help us through this process. And so we do expect to get more than 5,000, but it will be a far cry from the full value. But you have to do the repair, which which then in essence is maintaining the house. Um, you have to do that. I mean, all right. And then, and then the value of the house maintains. You know, you so can't leave the house. You know, you can't leave the house, you know, damaged. You don't want, you don't want that. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sure there are people who serve in town government who have tarps over their roofs, but yeah, that's not our intention. Uh, right. But my understanding of this process is that the snapshot is October 1st. And I'm telling you that on August, I think it was August 4th, we mm -hmm. suffered this incident. And on August 1st, 2020, these are the repairs that had to happen. We had a hole, we have holes in the roof on October 1st. And so I think that is the process that I'm trying to honor is the snapshot date. Are the holes repaired now? They are not. We, we've gone the whole winter without being able to repair those. Okay. So what is the value of the roof? So $5,000? So the uh, the contract you're saying we're about to pay thirty three thousand dollars for the roof to be repaired. And how much is your insurance going to cover? It's an ongoing process. Like I said, we've hired an insurance adjuster to help us through this. His price was we just paid out of pocket three thousand dollars. So we're hoping to get more than three thousand dollars more out of this. And it's same thing with the siding. So, While you're looking at that, I'll just say if if you just wanted to look at what this incident cost us, it's the roof for 33, the siding and shutters for 20, it's uh, the chimney two for 9,000, it's the gutters and the bulkhead for three, and it's the landscaping for 15. That was one incident. <clears throat> Um, so all of these things need to be repaired on the house. 
Is that is that correct? That's just, those are the those are the prevalent things that need to be repaired. That would that affect the, that would affect the market value, and they're going to be repaired basically by insurance money and your money. Is that correct? Correct. Um, and that would maintain the value of the house. So, I mean, certainly I feel better hearing you say it was 318 and not 343. Um, but I mean, sure, uh, I, I would, I would be willing to give you that. I think that's a fair compromise. Uh, I mean, I think anyone's going to come through and say, you know, the sewer stack is in terrible shape and some of these other things. But yeah, I mean, I think nobody's buying the house with holes in the roof and the siding blowing off, et cetera. Correct. Um, and probably if you add up a lot of the, you know, um, all the other, you know, items, uh, um you know because because the house you know back when you came the first time had a market value of 314 we're, we're at 318 less you know less uh what what this repairs would be so well we bought the house for 270 288 279 oh 288 sorry well so clearly but i so i remembered it was you know two and change yeah. It was less than what the assessed value was. Um, Mr. Jackson, do you have any input into where we are here? Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to kind of try to come close to the screen here so everyone can hear me because I know my microphone has not been working that well. Right. Uh, Mr. Coons might want to chime in, but no, it really comes down to a you know, and by the way, Mr. Liu, thank you very much for a very, you know, comprehensive overview of your property. You really did a great job in, in giving us a visual of, you know, what you're facing with the storm and the damage that you've faced and so forth and so on. And I think, you know, at least I, I want to I wanna believe that we've tried to adjust our figures to accommodate all of those factors. Now you did. You paid 288 in 2015. Real estate values have come up since then, especially last in the you know the last year or so. Uh, demand is very high for single-family homes. You are in a, by the way, very nice neighborhood next to Choate and you know, all that. You know, it it really is a desirable neighborhood you know you do have some repairs that need to be made i would tell you this we don't adjust for a, for a roof if someone needs a new roof we expect that over time that's going to be replaced and the only reason we would adjust for that if, if someone came in and said you know my roof is really bad and it's damaged and if we made an adjustment for that then as soon as you put on a new roof, we would change that adjustment. And we have not done that in your case. Uh, I would say that, uh, you know, really, uh, we brought our, our, our initial valuation from vision appraisal, which, you know, don't get me wrong, we hire vision appraisal to assist us. But Kevin and myself and the rest of the staff in our office, it's our job to evaluate on an individual basis property factors that may not fall into the mass appraisal process. And we've done that in your case. We, we brought your value down from where it was it, I think. You know, I don't want to repeat the numbers, but down to uh, $318,100. So it comes down to a question of market value. If you were going to sell that house today, put it on the market today, would you be able to get $318,000 for it? I think 
given even given the, the you know the challenges that you expressed, I think you probably would be able to get something very close to that, maybe more, maybe a little bit less, certainly in that range. And um, you know, without having an appraisal or something else to you know to tell us otherwise. I'm I'm very confident that you know three hundred and three hundred twenty thousand dollars for that for that home. It's a beautiful home, yes, sir. Beautiful home, and, um, and I know you have some work to do on it. The chairman has been over that. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I, I'm going to say I'm I'm, I'm going to say that you know, and I think I think our our recommendation is to reduce it a little bit. I'll let Kevin pick up on that. We're willing to, you know, we're willing to go with the recommendation of our staff. Our staff has looked at this in, you know, fairly good detail. Kevin, would you please, please, uh, you know, pick up? I did have um, Ian did uh, write us a memo on this, and um, the by his bottom line was that he understood that the, during the informal process, the condition was adjusted from good to average. And so after reviewing what uh, was submitted with this appeal, um, his recommendation was not to change the assessment. Um, he did a couple of, um, he did sort of a, he looked at other comparable sales. Um, just to point out the first two was 29 Pomeroy Avenue, I believe, and then 46 North Elm Street. Um, those were sales, and the long and short of it, that there were some other sales that sort of indicated that this property should have a value of about two, uh, three twenty-seven nine. So that's indicated a higher value. But Ian looked at that, and you know, we were we're at this point recommending no change. Um, and would you mind uh, talking, uh, putting some descriptors on what does it mean to be average or good or fair, uh, whatever other markers there are? Typically, something that's an average, we would we would look at the age of the building, number one, and then what's been done to it, if it's been renovated, if the kitchen's been updated. Um, typically speaking, if an older house in average condition, if it's been maintained, um, fairly well, then it's probably average to good condition. If it's if there's a lot of deferred maintenance, then that would be something that would be in fair condition. Um, I don't know if if you've done any work on the inside as far as the kitchen remodel or, or bathrooms. I didn't. I haven't really heard much about the interior. If anything's been done. No, uh, I mean I'm I'm happy to take this show mobile if you want to see what the kitchen looks like and to see the bathrooms. No, I, but... no we're we're getting to a point now where we still have two other people that are that are uh, waiting here, and we're. we're but I'm just saying, I think the way that he's described fair condition, like you know, we fall fair, possibly below. I mean, we've got broken windows, holes in the walls. We've got a kitchen that's from the 1950s. Uh, those things have not been updated. And I understand that Rhonda was out there last time, right? So maybe and, and we adjusted we adjusted the the market value to three fourteen uh, that time. So you know three eighteen is really you know not not out of the question this time. I mean four thousand dollars is really not um, out of the question, even even though you have this additional. Uh, Claim or or insurance issues or what have you. I you know, um, three fourteen is is not out of the question for the value of the house increase. So three eighteen. I, I think we need I think we need to wrap it up. So I I'd like to hear if any board members have a a motion. Mr. Chairman, uh, my recommendation motion is no change. Second. All in favor, aye. And that no change is based on on the three three eighteen one, not not three forty three two. Three eighteen one. Just to be clear. Okay. I, I think you, you have disregarded your own definitions and your own process of the snapshot of October first. Well, 
That may be, uh, but the assessor's office has done a lot of work on the property and determined uh, that number, and the board is in agreement with them. So, is there a next step? There's Superior Court. You can you can file motions for you know hearing in court. So. Can we request that Rhonda come back out? The board has made its made its decision. So So you're saying good night? Good night. Thank you. Caller nine, sorry for the delay. Could you please just identify yourself? Diane or Lisa? Diane or Lisa? Who's who's caller nine? That would be me. And who are you, Diane or Lisa? Lisa. Okay. Please Thank give you us for waiting. Sorry, sorry, we've run over. We we normally don't don't do this. That's okay. But That's okay. Let me find I... your, uh, um, some reason I'm not hearing you. You're not hearing me. Yeah, I'm not hearing you. I heard everybody else, but I'm not hearing you now. You're not hearing me now. You know, I hear you now. <laughs> okay. All right. So. This is hearing number 2020 170. Um, and it's okay. Lisa Soap, um, mm -hmm. Naked and Natural LLC. Right. And this is, I'm going to swear you in, okay? Okay. Uh, hang on a minute because I lost the. Yeah, we're having these issues tonight. No, hang on, hang on. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. I do. Okay, so let me get back to your appeal. You have put a market value of $500. Right. Uh, on your... Uh, on my personal, on my personal assets, yes. Personal items. Um, and, and what do we have here? We have, th this is a new business? Is that it is a new business. It's a new brick and mortar business, yes. Okay. Um, I so think, I, or I don't mean to be <laughs> interrupting you here. No. Um, I think what happened here is the mail, for some reason, I have not been getting my mail. I got everybody else's mail, and I think there's some lack of mail delivery here because I had sent all this in. Okay. Well, well. <laughs> I... I Okay, I'm losing you. No, no, I'm here. I'm, I'm just, I'm looking for some documentation. So hold on a minute. Hold on. Let me jump to a, a different. Um, okay. So we have here, it says you did not file a 2020 declaration. Um, Actually, I did, but this is the question being where it went is anybody's choice because I actually been going back and forth. You have a, you don't have a copy of, of what you sent in, do you? I do not. I've been going through all my records and I do not. So what? What is it that is on, was on the list? You you value it at five hundred dollars. What right so what, right? What what is it that you have? 
All I have in the business are folding tables, which I actually got from Goodwill, like about four uh, folding tables that I got from Goodwill, and a crock pot that I make my soap in. Um, um, that's it? That's what you that's filed? That's it. That's Computer, it. Gas register, chairs. Cash register, cash register. I do have a cash register that was given to me, so I would probably value that at 50 bucks. Um... Because the town, the town has you at an assessed value of sixty-two fifty. Because they don't have a documentation, they're trying to right. estimate what you what you have. So right. right now, your your tax liability with the town is one hundred and eighty-two dollars. All right. Um, okay. Uh, You know, again, without having a list, without knowing, without seeing, you know, we're 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 estimating, and that's all we have to go by. We don't have any real data. We have folding chairs, cash register, or folding tables, cash register, crock pot. Uh, you know, so I don't have a problem with that. I mean, with paying that, I really, I just uh, want to well, know. Then, then we can clean it all up, and then you can next year start over again. Okay, works for me. So, what would I be? Should I just send you a check for one hundred and eighty-two dollars then? No, you'll be getting a tax bill from the town. Okay. So, all right. So, can I hear a motion from the board? Okay. Uh, redu my motion is to reduce the. Uh, Assess no. value. Um, well, there's going to be no change, right? Uh, the current assessed value is sixty-two fifty, and she and that's a that's a hundred and eighty-two dollars in tax that she's agreed to pay. So, I'm sorry, make a motion of no change. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. When you get your tax bill, um, that's what you'll pay next year. Come into the mm -hmm. office and get the inf get the form and make sure somebody shows you exactly what you have to do and and do it by November first and this way, um, you know you your amount owed will be less and there'll be no penalty. Okay. Works. Thank you very much. I'm glad okay. it's cleared up. Thank you. And and when you when you send it back, either. Take it and walk walk it in and get a receipt for it or, you know, something like that. Okay. That would probably be uh, the best thing I could do. <laughs> correct. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your yeah. time. Sorry to keep everybody so long tonight. Oh, no, 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 no. That's fine. Um, okay. Take care. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Diane. Hello. Diane Lebel. Please identify yourself. Yes, it's Lebel. Yes, Diane Lebel, Seven Chimney okay. Hill Road, Wallingford, Connecticut. Okay, thank, thank you. you. I just I just need to find your packet of information, so please hang on. Sure. Uh, 
Hold on, <clears throat> you're in here somewhere. Yep. I know. Okay. All right. So this is hearing 2020-025, Diane yes. Level. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to yeah. swear you in. Mm -hmm. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. Yeah. So this is for Sedman Chimney Hill Road. You've placed the value of two fourteen nine uh, on the property, um, and currently the town. Wait a minute. Let's see. You've placed the market value of two fourteen nine on the property. Actually, I have more of a problem with the land. Because that's value. The exact, that's the exact value that the town has. So you're not you're not contesting um, the market value. So what I okay, go ahead. I'm contesting the I'm contesting the land value, the value of the land uh, that they gave an appraisal of one oh nine nine. And I'm looking at the um, area of where you um, gave us this, that you gave the value of. And uh, right across the street from my house is municipality land. It's all owned by the airport. And the runway is like 0.6 miles from my house. So we are right in line with, with the, the way the planes come in and out of the airport. And over time, the airport has expanded and it's been very trafficy over the last couple of years. And I noticed that the National Guard's been using it uh, for the maneuver training. And at 9, 9.30 at night, we're hearing these massive like helicopters. They're more like an army helicopter and they shake the house. And they do this on a Sunday night and on sometimes during the week, they'll be flying over for quite a while they do this. And then the same thing happened uh, with the, the flight school. Now they have a flight school that's opened up there. And we have a lot more air traffic coming over our home. So I look at the value of this property and I say, no, nobody's going to come here and buy this house with this kind of activity going on day and night. And the flight school is, uh, you know, obviously very active now. So this airport has expanded since 2016. And they pretty much added 70 more hangars, and they've added a lot more opportunity for people to utilize this uh, airport. And what I'm saying is the land property is not worth 1099 here. No way. If, if I was to put this house somewhere else, maybe on a dead-end street or a cul-de-sac, yeah, I could see the value maybe being 1099 because Wallingford is a very lucrative area to move to. But down here at the old section, I've lived here my whole life and I was born in this house. And when I bought it off my sister back in 2005, our taxes were like $2,700. And the airport was nothing like it was today. And today we have so much air traffic, it's not pleasant living here as it used to be when it was more of a country, you know, little country pumpkin area with the, you know, road over here, which was more, um, it wasn't traveled as much because we had so much traffic up at the top of the hill from all the new homes built up on Krasersky Drive and up on the top of Chimney Hill, which causes more of a cut through for Cheshire and South Meriden. So we have a lot of traffic here as well. So the, I'm more contesting and appealing the property um, valuation of the um, the land. Okay. Um, 
uh, Mr. Jackson, is there been any allowance um, for that in in the for oh, the airport? Thank you, Mr. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I mean, the property is appraised at two hundred fourteen thousand nine hundred dollars. Um, there are sales all, all around that area. That above that. Sales price. I'm going to ask Mr. Coulson to chime in because he has more of a documentation than I have to work with. But I mean, you know, you know, and I live not too far from that airport myself. And I, you know, and I know I wake up on Saturday and Sunday mornings and I hear the planes come and go. It's, it's, it's to me, it's not a major interference. And 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 that's what we're seeing in the market. The market reflects that it's not, you know, it's not something that people really, you know, uh, <clears throat> discount their homes for a significant amount. Again, we, we work on sales. We work on sales of, of, of comparable properties. And and I gotta tell you, two hundred and fourteen thousand dollars, you know, it's it's a cape home. Square feet. It's a very nice thing. It's a home that I would, I would, you know, and, uh, without any documentation, contrary, appraisal, or something, to show that we've missed the mark. You know, I would have to say that our, our figures are, our figures are pretty much right on the market. <laughs> Land value. So what I'm the woman spoke about the land value, and that's you know she has a valid point there. So you know, I don't know if you want to come here and live for a while and then see what it's like when you're laying in bed at 8:30 in the morning and you got Blackhawks driving flying over your house. And I have recorded them because I thought I was going to come to you guys in person, and I was going to let you listen to what I have to listen to. And I, I love Wallingford. I don't mind living here. And I think the, that there's beautiful parts of Wallingford, but I'm living across the street from an airport. And Wallingford sold a good portion of land back in 2016 to Meriden Airport so that they can extend a 75 foot runway that kind of comes almost close to my property. So when they fly, they fly directly over my house to land in that airport. And we have business jets. We have commercial jets now that come over here. They're not just small little prop planes that are flying, you know, around on a joyous Sunday afternoon. These are commercial planes that are coming here for Choate, uh, for maybe schools up in um, Cheshire, you know, with well-to-do parents that drive and fly their kids back and forth to uh, school over here. So it's become, I don't know if the assessor took that into uh, his um, appraisal because 1099 for land is appraised from here all the way up and around the corner from where I live. And nobody's land in front of this airport is worth 1099. Well, can I, can I get in there just a little bit? Because I live right, I, I live right near you. I'm on the other side of. When you say you live, do you live on Chimney Hill at the bottom of Chimney Hill? Is that where you live? No, I live. I live on off of Hill, Hill Avenue, the other side of the elementary school. And I have the you know the planes that come over our house. And when they take off, you know, it's really loud when they take off. But when they come into land, you can barely hear them. But that's not the point. The point is that you know we all live in that area, and in our in our and our home sell for a value that reflects the fact that we live in the and, um, you know, I, I understand your concern. I, I really do because I live there. I live right, not too far from you, I mean, less than a mile away, maybe half a mile away, maybe even less than that. But, uh, the, the so but that's is, not directly across the, the point street. Is, that's not directly. The property is valued at $214,000. So irrespective of the land value, I would ask you, if you were going to sell your house tomorrow, sell it for less than 
What what if do you if you say yes, I, I would have to disagree and say that I think you can get more than that. You know, you, you put a market value of two fourteen nine on the property, which is the same market value the town puts on the property. Um, actually, I want. I actually, I put what you put there because I thought that's what you were asking for. But I was. No. So what, I would what do you clean. what do you feel the property is worth? One ninety eight to two ten. This the house is on both sides of me. Which the problem with visions when they were here, they none of the houses were able to uh, be used as a. Um, uh, a market value because nobody really sold their house that was currently in these type of homes. The two houses that sold on both sides of me sold back in 2000, I want to say 14, one of them, and another one sold in 2017. And they were both renovated. The both houses are now renovated. So our house is still the additional, the, uh, it's the same uh, kitchen and bathroom that was originated with the house back in 1949. We had no upgrades. Still same cabinets. We did update a, we did have to put a new floor in because the other floor was um, definitely uh, worn. But the, the fact is I'm not really more, I'm more concerned about the property value than anything because of being right near the airport. And like I said, my house is 0.6 miles 0.6 miles from the runway so we get the planes coming pretty close to our roof to land so they're louder than maybe over to where um, the other gentleman lives because he's not as close to the airport so they come down and land just about above the wires and you could come and watch it to to see it it's and not someday i pray that they don't land on my house That'll be an, uh, another situation, oh, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I think the board has. Um, uh, I I think understood saying, and uh, I feel we probably have a motion uh, in regards to this. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to reduce the market value to two hundred and ten thousand dollars. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay, well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Okay, thank you. All right, have a good night. You too. Yeah. All right, bye. Okay, um, I think that is the last uh, appeal for the evening. Um, and um, do I hear any other business? Do I hear any motions? Um, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so Wednesday night, we'll, we'll uh, six o'clock. Take care. All right, good night. Good night. Good night. My guys. This conference will now be.